Hello, friends. Welcome to Barn Burner here on uh, yet another chilly Monday. Rabbit, rabbit. Feels like not rabbit, rabbit. Oh. Shit, shit is what it is outside. Uh, I don't know. Spring, what's going spring. On. No, no. Uh, colder. Feels like uh, already March. Uh, don't like it. Son of a bitch. Yeah, don't like it. A lot of snow. <laughs> uh, snowed five. Shoveled five times in one day. Uh, was that Saturday weird? or Friday? What was the shovel fest? Yeah, it shovel palooza. Yeah, it was. Uh, I guess it was Friday. It's a lot. Maybe it was. Yeah, it was a lot. But you know what? It didn't stop. It's good for you to get out of the house. It's good to get some, you know, fresh air. How's so, your back? Oh, so great. That's what happened to me. I know. Shoveling. I had to shovel. I'm like, why is my back out? It's the shoveling. You're not using your legs. Damn it. Hold You're on. not used to it. It's true. The way your life has gone, the path your life is just lost without his wife. I know he's helpless. Sad. Yeah. Uh, yeah sad. And our neighbors had a, a newborn, so I'm like, well, I'll do them. And I'm like, well, and then I'm just two down from my mom's old tea friend. Like, well, I should just keep going. Next thing you do half the block. But you're you not doing drive back. snow angel. The church right. is doing sidewalks. You're not doing driveways where you live. No sidewalks, and then we have a walkway oh, down the God. side. Sidewalk. No, but it's like half the block. That's a lot. You're, you're right. The though, driveway, driveway, and then your own walk, and then the sidewalk. That's true. That's a lot. Of Jack. Hello. See, see that thing, and you can No one can see it but me. But it's really, it's, it's, it's distracting me. See, on the monitor there, the mouse. Yeah. Ryan, mo poking me the in the eye. Ow! Ow! The little face washer. This is very important stuff. Yeah, there are. Thanks very for important sure, details. Right? Uh, we need to say uh, hello and uh, how are you to our to our buddy Bill. Hello, Bill. Hello, Terwilliger. Bill. Bill, Bill Terwilliger here in studio today. Bill jumped in on our Top Shelf Elf Christmas campaign. He was the top bidder in the Barn Burner experience. Yeah. And what an experience. I mean, already money well spent. I know. He's probably thinking, this is, I've, I've got enough. I could leave right now. <laughs> I don't know what he's done in the rest of his life, but this is going to be right. as good as it gets. Bill, have you been to Disneyland? How does this compare? Yeah, yeah. Bill was saying, I'm so glad I didn't bring my wife today. This is so nice <laughs> to just finally be. <laughs> I can't believe he said it, but he did. Wow. He's like, just don't say it on air, guys. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, These guys are pricks. No, he was saying, I should have brought the. the I, I hear it every once in a while. My wife, uh, she likes to show she's a fan. I hear this every once in a while. It's like, really? Are you sure that that's a good idea for I, everyone? I'm guessing they block out some content. Like maybe. our show with all the. Uh, you sure you're not pinned report stuff, the rats show. and the sea bombs and all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. Hey, whatever. So, uh, great to have you, Bill. Good to see you, Bill. Now, Bill looks like a guy we all know. I he feel, does. I swear, yeah, like, I think yeah. if we sat yeah. here long enough yeah. and grilled him with question, we yeah. would some way somehow know this. It's kind of like a Richie Preston knockoff. Strong, you know what? There's boy. some Bart Doan in there. Okay. I've got yeah. a buddy named Joel Armstrong. You're, you even have the same voice as this guy. army. Yeah, it's a good boy, though. Mm -hmm. Can he Boy. sing like Bill? That's the question. Bill's no, okay. No, he came. Uh, it's supposed to be the other way around. Hello. He came bearing gifts today. What so, is this from Mama? Is that what this is? I, I said, Well, we'll do a surprise. We'll open it. Well, here, you go ahead. Yeah, sure. Want me to open it? Yeah. Was this like a can of worms? What are we doing? Well, in case there's some rats in there, it's been a lot of that. <laughs> that would be so wicked. <laughs> Look at this. Enjoy Rhett Boomer and Pinder and Jack. Hey. Shout out for the Jack. So Those are homemade cookies. Are you kidding me? Oh, but there's more. Enjoy Rhett, Boomer, Pinder, and Jack. Lots of cookies. <laughs> Perfect. She oh, knows. Well, I could send one container. That's or... a lot of cookies, fellas. I think we're talking two dozen there. I'm home alone, and I've had the snackies the last couple nights. You've Is that right, eh? Yeah. yeah. One for yeah. Rhett. We'll split the rest of them. Yes. Well, thank you very much, uh, Mama Bill. That's very nice. Mrs. Bill. Yeah. Mom, Miss, Miss Bill. Miss Twilliger. Uh, I was going to say, I, remember we used to do a segment that was uh f i'm old yeah i got hit with about three of them this morning on the way in just today yeah just today mm. just today the first one that's cold it's minus 20 degrees now if you're watching from abroad you can do it's minus 20 and they get you your fahrenheit and whatever but it's cold even for us here cold day today yeah and as i turn the corner my kid he likes taking the bus. I don't know. He wants to get in the bus. I guess it allows him time to be in his phone before his day started. I don't it's know. It's a man of the people, Dean. So I turn the corner, and he's at the bus stop, and I kind of wave. No mitts, no gloves, bare hands. Yeah. On his, got his phone up. Bare, he's like, what the? Buddy. All right, well, you're on your own. Kids today. Mm. Turn the corner at the next set of lights. Go to grab a coffee. And there's, a, there's someone. Who is again high school age, mm. standing on the corner, either waiting to cross, whatever, with nothing but a hoodie on, hood up, 
hands in the the bunny hug. Yep. Free. I'm like, jeez, what the hell? And then it kind of, well, maybe this is someone who doesn't to get this kid a coat or something. Maybe. Sure. So I'm starting to think maybe I'll double back. We should do this. And then as I get through the light, there's two or three more of them standing at the bus stop in nothing but hoodies, yeah. doing the same thing with their hands. And it's like, you know what? Yeah, you're, it's not privilege. It's no. stupidity. Yeah, it is. You yeah. dumb kids. You know what? Go ahead. Freeze your tits off. I don't care. Like It's a badge of honor. It's that minus it's 20. I don't wear a jacket. I wore one in today because I, I don't know, but I typically don't. But what if you were getting on a bus? If you were going to go stand outside for a while and. Oh, dude, if you had car trouble today and no jacket, what a nightmare. Yeah, no, no, you guys got to toughen up. Is that what it is? You want to go outside? I don't, I go up, I you can do remote on do your it, phone. Do the rest of the Give yeah. us a construction update. <laughs> that was nice, eh, Bill? Fine and parking. Isn't that great down nice here? Nice and easy. It's beautiful down here. Just beautiful. Just like car stairs. Lots of parking yeah. available. Why well, leave? Why well, leave? Well, let's get into it. It mm. is a game day. Get your helmet on. Flames and the Kraken tonight. Yeah. I'm not sure what the Kraken are. They had a rough stretch that kind of pushed them back. They're the they were... Senators of the West. I was going to say Columbus, but yeah, that sense might be right. They uh, sense at least they have a lot of promise for. I don't know that aside from Veneers, who you're really excited about. Oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah. Sure. It's not no. team right now. He's not. Oh, they were one of those teams kind of in that hunt for a wild card. Oh, they're kind of in that, that yeah. then they went for a stretch of two, seven and one mid Jan to early Feb and it's knocked them. But they're back again. They're five, two, and one in their last eight. So it's yeah. you know what the kids call this nine team? nine points out of a playoff uh, of wild card bird. They are mid, Ling, just mid. That's what the kids say. That's what they call it, yeah, mid. mid. Just you're not great. You're Would not they also be sus? Jack, can we get a confirmation? Could that, they be uh, sus as well as sus? Mid? Are they mid or just Would, one of the? Well, other? they. I don't think they'd be sus. Okay, yeah. because I don't think they're supposed to be that great. That's well, true. They're in freaking. Yes, they were. Last year, they were second round of the playoffs. Uh, they did upset Colorado, but they did it as what? An eight seed or a seven seed? Oh, I, yeah. Six seed. They had to be a wild card to play Colorado, right? They're different divisions, so they they would have been seven or eight. But yeah, I mean, shocking. And they had the Nichushkin thing. Colorado kind of imploded a bit, but yeah. I like that. It was read with some force uh, and volume. Six, the force and the volume was going to, oh, okay, well, they must be sixth because you I heard how to, to fit I, the no, it's the, yeah. yeah. Two threes play each other in division, <laughs> and the wild cards get the division leaders. How could we ever find out? There's no way of knowing. Yeah, it doesn't really. matter. It's it doesn't affect opinion. tonight's game, uh, but they're mid. They're mid. And sus. Or per- potentially, potentially sus, we don't sus. know. We're not sure. Uh, flames, though, what would you say the Flames are? Uh, they're pretty mid, but it's been a nice run that uh, has erased some below mid play. They played very well of late. Yeah. Five in a row, nine and three in their last twelve. Mm-hmm. They are nine and three. Wow, because they went that's four in a row, yeah. three losses in a row, five wins in a row. That's tricky. That's seven fifty hockey. It's pretty good. Yeah. yeah, so Seattle their last eight. Don't get too excited. Yeah, it's oh, pretty wow. good. Uh, but yet have not gained any ground or lost ground on the Predators, which is not ideal. Nashville Seattle have won from- eight in a row. Yeah. Eight. Imagine losing ground while winning five in a row. That's happened. The opposite the of last year. That's right. Winnipeg, Winnipeg was, did yeah. everything to keep them in. That is correct. I can confirm that. Winnipeg did have a rough second half. Okay. I'll write it down. First I'll to write worst. That down. Yeah. 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 Um, Eight in a row. So geez. make sure you get down to the dome tonight. And check out the crack. Now, both of you donkeys were at the game oh. on Saturday night. It was awesome. Were you on the broadcast? Me? Yeah. I don't think so. Why? Because I had, it was after the fact, and on the whatever. Who's broadcast? During the Kipper thing, I turn on the Kipper thing, yeah, and I see a guy. I'm not, I'm not really, I'm paying attention. It's just on. I kind of look. It's just, oh, there's Pinder. What was like, that was, guy wearing? Do you remember? That was not Pinder. He was wearing like a Flames jersey, so no, he would not be doing that. She's, no, no, the guy in behind. And then I went to skip it, and of course, it's the Sportsnet app, so it's complete shit. And it then it just turned shit. itself yeah. off, and then you couldn't turn it back on again. So mm-hmm. it's a mystery yeah, that knows? remains to be uh, to be determined. Never know. Probably um, best I wasn't on the, the the TVs that night. Well, that was early, though. I mean, it's, that's what I mean. Yeah, uh, I think, and Bill also in on. I think consensus being good show, pretty nice night, awesome, pretty good show. Do you agree, Jack? Uh, Jack, remember uh, his Pittsburgh roots, so he uh, oh, has right. different rooting interests and was wearing enemy. But as far as the Kipper thing, yeah, the, yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. I was going to give Sid a hug for you. 
Really? I was standing beside him. He was on the bench. Yeah. I said, sorry, kid. You know who you were? Or? Not a fly. <laughs> they said my name. He was admiring my jacket. Yeah. Oh, yeah. A that, lot of people. Uh, were... That jacket got a lot of buzz. Yeah. Um, people want to know if that's pleather or leather or platypus leather. Oh, no, that's a Nashville jacket, right? That is a Nashville great Nashville jacket. jacket. Yeah. And last time I saw that jacket, we had one of those corner suites that we, yeah. you and I were hanging in. Yeah. That was good times. I think that might have been a, oh, uh, and this a is Corey me. Mace event. Yeah. This is me, not him saying. That is not pleather. That in U.S. dollars, it's a lot. Oh, yeah. That's not a cheap jacket. No. That was it was a, interesting that everyone else did seem to get a memo about dress code. Rhett, did, I, you don't get your email on your phone. I mean, I, and I liked I thought you looked great. People were saying Rhett looks bow. He can't be anywhere near 50. That guy's got to be 28, 29. Um, it was the haircut, eh? Did, you didn't get I, that I, email? I, so I go, because I, I said, I think I told you that. I went for the haircut. Yeah, yeah. And the guy said, you can't go full mohawk. Right. Yeah. I wanted to, but okay. I still thought I looked all right. You did nails. Yeah. And I did. I told the people I will not be wearing a suit. Yeah. Mostly because I can't squeeze into one. Like, I actually mm. tried on a couple pairs of pants, and it was like, there were three or four inches. Like, I don't care what kind of belt you had. You were not cinching yeah. that. Well, and you know what? Eyes just wide yeah. open. And to your credit. It's because of those other assholes around there. There you go. You got Bunch McGear, yeah. you got a Ginla, yes. you got Jelena, Teacher's all pets. still in shape, yes. doing sit-ups and squats Luke. and burpees. Go beat it. You're not playing anymore. Great representation of right? right. Yeah. Even Noodles. I mean, he's lean. He's not, don't know if he's in great shape, but those other guys, they're still fit and stuff. Hell out of here. Yeah, there were no chubs, right? Me. That's true. Me they needed Croner on that set just to even things out a little. Just stray bullets. <laughs> what? Just for no reason. What? He's he would have backed up Kipper now and then. He was in a suit on Friday. It didn't look Black great. Ace. Just a stray they should have gone leather shot. jacket, just like our guy. From the here. grassy knoll. What? You needed a little counterweight. Poor Croner. But anyway, the, uh, I mean, it was, I liked when you guys were talking afterwards, or I guess it was during spoiler alert uh after hours when kipper said his youngest son there was like is this what it was that what it was like dad when you were playing when it was like the lights and it's like yeah that's what it was like that's so good you you can't buy that moment i think unbelievable. it was amazingly special for him and you do uh, honestly you feel part of it yeah oh, having yeah. having like i look up there and i'm like kipper and iggy yeah like you do feel a small I part bet. of it and i think they want you to and it's uh, but for his kids, especially his youngest, because I asked Aro, his oldest kid, I said, do you remember? He goes, I remember what an eight-year-old would remember. I right. remember a little bit. And you got to remember, Kipper wasn't a bring his kid. Or, he didn't like that stuff. It was like, I, I go here. I do this. This is just my job. Mm -hmm. This isn't it's good at it. Yep. it was just, yeah. I'm really good at it. I'm focused. I know how I have to go about it. This is what I do. He didn't live the I'm an NHL lifestyle. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. it wasn't. Mm -hmm. Any anyway, blah blah blah, but for his youngest to get there, and I think still for his oldest because he only remembers a little bit, it had to be very special, and maybe more special for Kipper to know that his kids realize how important he was to the team, community, yeah, league. That would be something. No matter, yeah, my dad played. He was, it was very popular. This whole thing, that would be such an emphatic statement. Yeah. To be like, holy cow! He was a bleeping was, rock star. Yeah, that's what like, he was. That's what guy, we remind yeah, yeah. I don't know how guys can keep that together when you got their family on the I carpet. I thought he was going to burst. Going up. Yeah. It's like, how are you managing to keep your emotions in check? God. The uh, I thought you know, classic Kipper, incredibly like didn't want to take any of the praise. Went way out of his way to compliment his teammates right from the press conference on Friday at the dome that you were at. Saturday's speech, he he certainly. Give a lot of love to all you guys, that whole crew. And then in after hours with Scott Oak and you guys again, like you forget he very, very humble guy. You knew he was quiet. You know, he's that dry sense of humor and funny. He likes being one of the guys taking shots at guys here or there, but happy to share the credit. Even in games where they'd get shelled and he made 50 saves, like, oh no, the boys played well in front of me. Like he never, ever put himself above the team. Never, never. And I did like you said it. I, I, I did like that his personality came out just enough to just be, enough ah, okay yeah. yeah he's he's a little shit disturber he likes to have some fun he <laughs> yeah. likes a good laugh yeah. Yeah. yes i wonder if you go into his house back home 
Are there any jerseys on the wall? I can't imagine. Right? I, I just wonder, if, when you think of his kids and their window to his career, what yeah. is... Because you know he's not bringing it up. No. And there's probably not a gonna, bunch of memorabilia around say, the house. If, if it is up, it would be because Sadie and the kids put it up, not him. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think he... No. Yeah. Like, yeah, like his replica of the Vesna. Is it in a box? I think it'd be somewhere where Red or World Junior it, gold medal is. Like, like, or is it up somewhere? <laughs> I, I kind of wonder about that. But oh, good job by the Flames. Great work. I, I also thought, too, for the Penguins, the players, there'd be some of those guys, they just, yes, he was a good goalie. There, And then you watch that friggin' montage, like, holy shit. It didn't stop. What still, and but today's kids will really stand out for them. Obviously, the saves are special and awesome. What will stand out for those guys was when they list the amount of games he played. Yes. That doesn't happen. It's yes. the last they, they, like, When they hear those kids, they might not know who he is. When they hear 76. What the what? What games did they play back then? 100? Like, yeah, what are, like, what are you talking The goalie played 76. What are you? What? So if you think about that, 82 game season, that is one start a month. For the backup, it's a shitty job. October, November, December, January, February, March. Like there, there you go. Half of April, one start a month for the backup. How about just standing in the crease and not making saves? Just for sixty minutes, you got to stand there for seventy six. Your back would be yeah. sore. Jesus Christ! When do I get to sit down? I don't. Not till the intermission. This is That's terrible. All the stretching was, was his back. Terrible. Yeah, um, Big D was there. Loved it. Yes, it was. So great. I'm going to say this because I think it's important. D has taken a lot of heat over the years and his coaching style and it's his fault about losses so here's the picture we're downstairs at the dome we're in the media room where you have meals before and they've got it roped off for us and all the boys are there all the guys you saw and came on the ice everyone's sitting there around the table having a bullshit daryl walks in everyone to a man stands up forms a line walks over and shakes his hand that's the level of respect yeah. that that crew have for that guy. I, you may, from afar, you may hear rumors that he's hard on guys. I guarantee you, he was no harder on the guys last mm -hmm. when he was last year he was coaching than in our group. Yeah, you got pushed the same way. There are ways of dealing with it, and I just want to point it out how much respect that man had from that group of guys. No question. And the other thing is, I think people in this city. They understand last year was a bad year. The body work is huge. Yeah. And sort of just like at the end of his GM time, you're like, ah, this isn't really it. But still, like, there's a huge debt of gratitude from the city to Daryl. And you heard it. You got a massive roar from the crowd a year after yeah, being either. terminated. Yeah. Like, this, this isn't anyone that thought, okay, well, Daryl's just a bad coach and it didn't work and screw him. Like, no, no, no. It was a bad year, and it was a bad year for a lot of the players on that team. It's probably a bad year for the GM in some regards, maybe the owner as well. It was a bad year for the whole organization. But I don't think Calgarians have – their opinion on Daryl has changed. He's a Hall of Fame caliber coach. He's meant a lot to the organization in terms of some of the runs they've put together. I mean, you start to look at the franchise sans Daryl, like you never have the 0-4 run because you never got Kipper. It's the thing about that kind of a job where you're – you're in the public eye. You're going to wear the target. When things are going well, you're celebrated Jack Adams. Yeah. When things don't go well, they you're out of town. And I would think it's that's what you see in the NFL. It's it's just, it's with sport. It's the nature of the business. But I right? because we talked about it before. He's going. He's got to be there. He's the guy that brought him to town. Yes. And and I thought that you, you could hear that there was a little bit of extra zip and even yes. from the crowd for yes, Daryl when he came was. out. And I mean, not surprised to hear that story. I though. just thought that's, it was. I was there and I was like, look at this. The man walks in and everyone. Yeah, Good Darryl. reminder. Yeah. Daryl, how are you? Yeah. Darryl, how are you? And, and I think he sort of, I, I can't speak to where his head's at, but he goes to the Wranglers games all the time. He goes to the second deck, which is empty. He goes 15 rows up. He stays out of everyone's way. He doesn't have to do that. He would still get hugs and handshakes in the, in the lower concourse. I think he might be feeling what you're trying to sort of put aside. He's still beloved in this city. Yeah. Never mind last year, because the year before that, he won the Jack Adams, yeah. right? So did he hang around for a bit? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Chris and Wanda were there. Everyone was there. I was going to say, on the one, really Chris, the one shot on TV, you could see Chris go in. and How did we not get a Chris dance cam last night? Damn yeah, it. Like, yeah. Yeah. Or on Saturday. Chris, Chris is. like He's the mayor there? He was so good. He was so good. <laughs> All the kids. What's this kid's name? i got to meet this guy. Yeah. Like, he was so good. Yeah. He was so good. I, 
it, first class from the Flames. Great uh, job. Well, well done. And I mean, obviously for us, we're close to it. It gives our ego a bit of a boost too to even have the to feel part of it. But I really did think it was well done. And the guy, and it, for me personally, the fact that we just hung as a group the night we went out for supper, it was twelve of us just talking. And the night at the rink, we stayed in the suite. There were some guys moving around a little bit, but afterwards we just stayed there and we just bullshit and we told stories. Really, really liked that yeah. part of it. Yeah, it's got to be great. There, I had seen a photo. I think it was on Sean Kelso's Instagram. I've got it here if you want. There was the whole row of you there. guys. And then there was, I think there was somebody on a FaceTime or on a, on a phone. Do you remember who that was? I do. <laughs> okay. Do you want to? <laughs> Uh, is, is it sus <laughs> no it's awesome <laughs> okay, and great. it's kipper so kipper's good buddy is mark d pasquale yeah. if you give me my phone i'll get you the picture mark d pasquale is the trader for the flames well people's starting to he's not gonna like oh, this. oh no yeah do you know where i'm going i with know this? where you're gonna be going <laughs> <laughs> did you zoom in <laughs> oh no oh jeez. Uh, what's that show the guys are just big earn yeah McCracken. Yeah. Kingpin. Kingpin. Mm -hmm. Who's the guy with the it's, hair? Yeah, bigger and McCracken. Yeah. yeah. So Depot nice. had been at the dinner and then he left, but we put a picture of <laughs> we had a picture of him in the picture, but it was bigger. He's kind of got the bacon strip haircut there. It's <laughs> sorry, Depot. Yeah. You're not making it better, right? Not, a lot of guys get there starting it. Some guys younger in life, some guy. When there's a tough decision to be made, Deepa just hasn't made that decision. <laughs> He's got to lean on the people that have made that decision. All of them said I should have done it sooner. <laughs> yeah, it's you know what? It, it's I Afradius. Oh yeah, wow! Kind of wow. you know because wow. it's, it's here and then it's kind of not there, but it's here and then it's it's, it's going down the. Back. <laughs> it's a vibe, but it is. Does it not? Like I'm sorry. Yeah, no, it's, you can see the. Anyway, I'll sorry. send it to you. Well, maybe we stray, should. It's a it. lot of strays today. Right. Not just me. Dude. Sure. I have nothing to do with that one. Yeah, stray bullets. I haven't even mentioned today. Mike Smith yet today. Jeez, or Brian Elliott. Uh, yeah, and I do. I mean, we'll get to that in what Noodles nailed. We knew yes. he would. Uh, but there again, perfect tone perfect. for a national broadcast in a public space. We have Noodles on and we get greasier, funnier stories than that. But that was the appropriate speech for that day for that crowd, for that TV audience, and for his boy Kipper. Yeah. It was 100% respectful and funny. I love the couple uh, cracks he had, the one getting hooked off it's by so Daryl one more time. Yeah. is the perfect way to end it. You end on a high note with big laughs. And the other one was just talking about, you know, all these guys are so strong on this team. And, you know, Jerome had muscles on his forehead. You're like, oh, my God, that is yeah. an absolute singer. No, he, he nailed it. You knew he would. And, uh, and I'm happy for him because I know I think no matter how comfortable you might be, there's a lot of pressure there, there, right? There's some pressure, and it's different to write it and prepare it and then step out onto that onto the ice surface yep. in front of that crowd and, and then pull it off. But I thought he did awesome. Kudos to Brennan Parker hosting. Yeah, real good job. Perfect. And Parker has been around for a while doing stuff for Flames TV, but that's a big spot. Uh, Peter Marr narrated the thing, which sounded awesome in-house. Yeah. I don't know how much of that got on TV. Crick, and Scotty Crickshank, formerly of the Herald, longtime Herald writer. He's the one that penned it. Perfect. And he's narrated by that. Peter. So good. Yeah. And then uh, Peter Hanlon was obviously instrumental. Rhett, you could speak to his role. Like, the whole week has basically been set up. Peter's the guy behind the scenes that takes care of all of it. And so that is a huge feather in his cap that that was a smashing success. And the hockey team, for a while, I don't know if they were going to help pull the rope in that direction. And then they gave you one of the yeah. best third periods of the season. That place was electric. The early start, uh, the booze was flowing, and then the big comeback victory. Two two-goal deficits erased, goal in the final minute. Uh, more thoughts on that night, plus what's coming up tonight at the Dome. Right now, we head to the Insider Hotline. It's a presentation of TELUS. Enter to win one of six monthly prizes, including tickets to Calgary hockey games. Awesome tech like AirPods, Apple Watches, and more. No purchase necessary. All you need to do is go and check out the survey online and enter. For your chance to do just that, go to telus.com slash flames contest as we go to oh, look at that. the insider hotline and say hello to Frank Sarah Valley. Busy week for Frankie. Are you ready for it? Have you are you he's under his eyes? You're starting yeah. to grow. I don't there know, go. Frank. Rough start. Yeah, I mean, not much sleep. But I would say I am well prepared. Out of boy, is it? Are we going to have some deals left come trade deadline day? Do you think that kind of is there maybe going to be a lull now and then? 
the the final trades because it's some big names have come off the board. Uh, is it are they going to trickle in or is it going to be some holding pattern now? No, I, I think. Look, you can never handicap the time, but for me, the fact that at least three giants in the West have not made any moves yet in Colorado, Vegas, and Edmonton, mm -hmm. that gives us some real hope that this could come down to the wire on deadline day itself. And I, I just, I'd be absolutely floored if those teams all don't make big, big splashes. That's a good point. What about uh, Rangers, Panthers? Like those are teams of the president's race as well. Yeah, Rangers are, I think they're certainly going to be in that same category. Um, the Panthers, this is the best line I can use, and it doesn't sum it up any better than this. They want to shop at Gucci with a Walmart wallet is basically <laughs> where, where they're at. I mean, yeah. it's not because they don't want to spend. They just don't have the assets to do it. Right. And that's the spot that they're in. They keep at making tons of calls. They're trying to find out the market prices for all these different players. I just don't know how they get there on most of them. And is it another forward for them? They got Nick Cousins playing on Kachuk's line. That's probably not what they dreamt up at the beginning of the year. No, they're also in the defense market. They've been one of the teams that's kept pretty close tabs on Hannafin and what happens there. Um, I do believe the Panthers are on the short list of teams that Hannafin would sign with ultimately. And I think the Panthers are trying to weigh that out. If this is a player that we really covet, is this our only opportunity to get someone like him because he might not make it to free agency this summer? They want to continue to try and improve their back end. That's been one of the, you know, sort of plans for their season the whole time has been to continue to improve and better balance out this team. They got away with, you know, this year in terms of trying to find some smart additions like an Oliver Ekman Larson, et cetera. But they also are now in a position where they need to pay Brandon Montour to stay if they want him to. And they need to pay Gustav Forsling. And there's a lot of work to do to keep that Sam team Leonard. in top form. Yeah, we had talked. Is it, are, are you of the opinion that a Reinhardt extension happens there? I, I don't know how it doesn't. I don't know how they could let him walk. Yeah, And they've rolled out the red carpet. They've made their offer. I think it's been in the nine to nine and a half million dollar a year range, which if you're thinking Reinhardt, oh, maybe that sounds light based on the season he's having. The equivalent of that in tax, you know, net tax dollars is 12 something, 12 to five in another market or in Canada. So um, he's certainly earned it. But I think even the Panthers right now, for someone that has said and done all the right things, they're probably a little bit surprised that this hasn't gotten done yet. Yeah. So if you're saying Nealander's the great comp, you should be in that neighborhood or north. Well, he is if he you is, factor the exactly. tax environment. Yeah, yeah. 100%. Which is nice. Now, we saw on the weekend, uh, Evgeny Kuznetsov of the Washington Capitals, he, he comes back to the team. The team then... Uh, rather than inserting him into the lineup or getting him on practice ice, they put him on waivers. He clears waivers and is now, I think I read this morning, the highest paid player ever to play in the American Hockey League. I'm not sure if that's accurate or not, but it's kind of more it than is accurate. Wow. Yeah. Um, is, is there going to be, is there any kind of a market for Kuznetsov or is are we seeing kind of the end of this career now? Potentially? No, I don't think it's the end of his career. I think it's the end of his tenure in Washington. Okay. Whether that happens now or whether it happens in the summer or however the machination of that is, um, they reach the end of the line. This is a player that clearly has a history of drug use, and I think that they have been in a spot where they've given him multiple warnings, and I think before the season started, they said he's been frustrated, they've been frustrated with him. They basically just said three strikes and you're out. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, so a lot of people have been responding to me on social media saying, oh, isn't this a harsh way to treat a player? He's coming out of the player assistance program. The point is, yes, um, they've been more than patient to this point with his issues that he's been working through. And when you don't see any progress and when you, you're kind of embarrassed yet again, having a player that you're paying, you know, $8 million a year, not get his, his act together, well, then you you know that's it you, you've got to draw the line somewhere and so the caps have done that uh whether he's trending towards a buyout this summer hmm. whatever it might be 
I think there's been a, not, I think I know there's been a huge drop on an on ice play as well. That has made it damn near impossible to move. You could use him in the shootout in the playoffs though. That'd be good. So yeah. good. I mean, he's so he great. At the at Come playoff time. Miles an hour. Yeah. It'd be so great. Um, so New Jersey. Wait, wait, wait a second. You did make a joke about playoffs. Yeah. And you do have yes. to give him some props because he has scored the biggest goals in Caps franchise history. So had a good run I remember there. I remember voting for, for Con Smythe in 2018, and I was really torn between Kuznetskov and Ovechkin. I think I, I have to go back and look, but I think I went with Kuznetsov over Ovechkin, awesome. who ended yeah, up winning. Really good. Uh so New Jersey and Calgary tied. They, of course, they make the Toffoli deal early in the season, and we've heard a lot about the goalie. And I'll ask you about the goalie in a moment, I suppose. But they make a Tanev deal this week too. Well, that's it. Sure, yeah. yeah. Um, well, think about it. The lines of communication remain open between yep, two fine fair. American general managers. Who's who's to say? Yeah, who's to say? Are they? But are they buying? Are they selling? Because on one hand, they're looking at adding and then you hear well Tofoli could be had yeah where are you at right so what yeah. are what are you and i guess uh, it's part of a bigger question are are there any teams out there that are you're under the impression that maybe now there's obviously we saw what happened with pittsburgh but i think they should have been sellers anyway are there any teams that have maybe made a pivot here now just days away from the deadline where we're no longer pursuing a wild card or if, if we get one it's fine but we're going to sell as opposed to maybe hold tight or add. And they're eight back with two games in hand, just for context on New Jersey. Yeah, so the Devils and Penguins both had disastrous weekends. So when we talk about setting up the deadline, I'd say disastrous trips out west. Um, when we set up the deadline, that's the other part of this week and what makes it so intriguing is that we've also kind of seen the standings crystallized a bit. Like I think the 16 teams that we're looking at right now are going to be the 16 teams on opening night of the playoffs when the puck drops. Mm. Um, that's more or less the position that these teams have played themselves into. And Nashville, for instance, has crystallized themselves winning eight straight, I think, as a playoff team. Be where a I, I think Barry Trotz is going to be in a spot where he's going to add a little bit over the course of this week instead of really subtracting. So New Jersey... Uh, they vow that they're going to see what these next two games look like. I would argue that we've seen quite enough evidence to this point to suggest that they're not a playoff team. Their details are a mess. The game against the Kings on Sunday was garbage. Um, they, they're a team that's talented that really doesn't work. They didn't make life difficult at all for the, for the Kings on Sunday. And They've got a lot to figure out there. Holes on defense. Goaltending is in the bottom two or three in the league. Been awesome. And, yeah. and oh, by the way, Tyler Toffoli's having a 26-goal season as a pending free agent that you gave up a pretty decent amount when you when you consider the year Sharon Govich has had that I think they're, they have to move him. So he's gone from 44th out of 45 on my trade targets board all the way up to number six. Cool. When the new yeah. one comes out today, they've, I think they're in a position where they can do really nothing but consider moving him because they're not winning with him. And so that would probably mean they're not shopping for a Jacob Markstrom. I think when you look back to when those rumors were swirling, there's a lot of games where their goaltenders have allowed four, five, six. Uh, yeah. and it's been an ugly month for their net mining after that deal went through. And now in the last uh, week, we've heard some comments from Jacob Markstrom not thrilled with the Flames. Can you make sense of what did or didn't happen and, and who those shots may or may not be aimed at? Yeah, so I think some of the coverage and reporting around the Markstrom situation, I think Craig Conroy's catching strays that he shouldn't be. One. Uh, two, in terms of where this goes from here, um, I never say never because I do think that the Devils are in a spot where they, if they're going to make a move, and I don't know why you would at this point, unless you think that you can save your season. Really, the other inclination or push to make a trade for Markstrom now would be to get ahead of what the market is this summer when Calgary could have four or five teams in the mix as opposed to just one in New Jersey right now. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to Markstrom overall, this goes back to the reporting that I had a few weeks ago when I said, 
that the Devils and Flames were really close on a deal. And the Flames did indeed go to Markstrom and, and ask him, we're considering making a trade with New Jersey. Is this a place that you would consider playing? And he did give them an answer of yes. Now, why I said Craig Conroy is the guy catching strays here is because, to my knowledge, the Flames and Devils did agree to the details of a deal in principle that then when Craig Conroy took it back to essentially ownership slash upper management, and if you're reading between the lines, president of hockey ops, Don Maloney, that's when the deal then got nixed. I don't think the Devils were happy about that. And now in turn, I don't think Jacob Markstrom's been happy about that, which you understand why. Not only did they ask you and you say yes, but more than that, he wants a chance to compete and he wants a chance to, to win on the term left on his deal. Now, that may have to well wait until the summer in order to have that be rectified, but for the reporting out there that Jacob Markstrom is upset with Craig Conroy, that part I don't think is accurate. And so the money retention, that sounds like something the owner would weigh on. Is that where you see this potentially of breaking down? Yeah, I think at least how it was relayed to me was that the the Flames upper management, whoever you want to call it, ownership, president of hockey ops, they felt like retaining or or the fact that they were retaining, they didn't get enough extra to do that, meaning there should be a decent enough incentive for two years left on his deal. Um, if you're going to take some money back, you better be able to point to, hey, this is what we're getting in order to do that. And apparently that's where the hangup was. And then there was reporting over the last few days that, well, okay, now New Jersey, hey, they were in a spot where they helped the devil, the uh, TANF deal get done. Mm -hmm. They don't need them to retain anymore. I don't know if it's too little too late. I don't know if this deal can be resuscitated or not. I don't really know why the Flames would have an incentive to unless the Devils are making an offer that they can't refuse. But it's been a pretty wild few weeks on that front. And I guess you just take a step back and put yourself in Markstrom's shoes and you can understand why. You can understand why. The only saving grace, I think, for on all this, and I, I think you guys are right on it, is that the Flames are still battling for a playoff spot. As, as far out as yeah. I mean, Nashville's been awesome, but he's eight, eight in a row, in a row so yeah. it's kind of stopped the Flames from gaining ground. But at least Conroy and the coach can go the, to the goalie. If he doesn't get moving, go, we're in a battle. Like, yeah. Let's let's ride this out. Yeah. And to Frank's point, there's there's a market in the summer if you want to get this done. It doesn't feel like the opportunity will have passed. There's still going to be a lot of teams yeah. that need goaltending, and a lot of teams will have more cap space in June than they do now. You had noted a few times, Frank, all three goalies in LA, their contracts are up. That's a team. If they could get a, a Vesna caliber guy for four million, why wouldn't they? But look at the market of what free agent goalies are available this summer. Capo Kakinen, Ilya yeah. Samsonov. Mm -hmm. I mean, no, 36. Yeah. No one that you'd be excited for. And Markstrom will be coming off of what was a great season. I think it only gets better for the flames for, from here. Mm -hmm. I think they're in the absolute position of power right now. Like I said, if someone, if Tom Fitzgerald wants to come, you know, this week and, and knock your socks off by all means move him. But if not, you could have three to four other teams that are right there targeting Markstrom this summer, which again speaks to the potential of why New Jersey might want to get ahead of it over the next five days, whatever happens over these next 20 games this year. Mm -hmm. So be it, but we need to get our guy and we finally need stability in net. And the same reason why, you know, there's been lots of talk about Hannafin and, and Tampa, um, maybe Tampa and or Florida or whoever else wants to get ahead of what the free agent market would be this summer. This may be your only chance to get him. Let's go there. Hannafin and Tampa. We've heard a lot about these it's last two, week, Frank, right? The, yeah. yeah. The agent has been vocal about it. So we're hearing a lot of these two and I, you don't always get what you want, but it seems like Noah would be happy to go to Tampa. I'm uh, how happy would Tampa be to get him? And, how does this trade get done? Because they they do not have a first this so 2026. year. So they yeah. are out at least, a, you're a couple years from seeing potential 
uh, a big chunk of the return if you're Craig Conroy. Is that enough to entice him to make a deal here? What's your read? Well, I think first off, the interest is mutual. I think it's not just Hannafin wanting to go to Tampa. You don't that doesn't materialize out of the clear blue sky. There's also certainly some interest from Tampa's perspective. To your point, the, the thing I keep coming back to is I'm having a hard time seeing a pathway to a trade unless Tampa is putting their top prospect and kind of really in parentheses, their only prospect in Isaac Howard on the table. I, I don't, I don't know how you're able to do this and make it happen from a flames perspective. How can you possibly get fair value in return for Hannafin? And that's why I think part of this deal has been so difficult is it's not just that he has a somewhat limited market in the teams that he's willing to resign with. And really, I think unfortunately for the flames, and I think we could have a whole separate discussion on, I would say how much BS that is if you're in the final year of your deal and you only have an eight team, no trade to sort of try and flex out beyond that and steer the process in your favor uh, and whisper ahead of time that you wouldn't be willing to resign in certain markets. I think that's no good. Uh, I think that's too far beyond trying to seize control of it. But um when it comes to these other teams that he may be willing to sign with, very few of them have the assets that are going to make it worth Calgary's while. And then there's the next part of this conversation, which is let's say you are Julian Brisebois and you're sitting there, you have a team that's likely to be a playoff team, albeit one of the wild cards and could kind of do damage when it comes to the postseason this year. Would you really give up your top prospect? And plus whatever else in order to get a guy that this summer on July 1st, if he loves you and you love him, you could get for nothing. What GM? So I'm with you. I don't think I, I wouldn't. If if he's so in love with going to Tampa and I'm breeze, I'll, I'll wait and see. Yeah. My, the question I have is what GM? I'm going to go down here. What GM and what you had, a, team? you had a little fun this weekend on yeah. Kipper weekend? No. Did, you, did you get put in the Nothing Kipper going on here, Frank? Weekend? No, no, just uh, not read into it. Yeah. What GM and team that would be in the interest in getting Hannafin wouldn't believe they could just keep him? And I don't mean I know, I know what you mean by the rumors and stuff. And trust me, there was a lot of conversation amongst us old bastards on the weekend about this exact topic. What yeah. you just said, but my question is, if, if I'm and I don't, I'm having Let's a say Vegas, Vegas, sure, yeah. Vegas. What, do you think McCrimmon doesn't think that he has full confidence that once he gets Hannafin into Vegas that he can't sell him on staying, right? Like, I don't understand. I, 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 it's disappointing to me to have Hannafin let these rumors come out. But on the other end, I think it does muddy the waters. But if I'm another GM, I'm in Carolina, I'm like, and I want to get Hannafin back, I'm not doing it. You're going to come here. We're going to have success. Guys like playing here. Yeah. It's it's not like it's not Winnipeg. Maybe Winnipeg would have a hard time keeping yes, them. You know what I mean? There are most of these other cities and markets have to feel that it, once the guy gets here, we'll have a chance of keeping. Everyone thinks that. Everyone thinks that they do it better than the next team. They <laughs> think that their facilities are better, their coach is better, they've got the most money, whatever it might be. Not for nothing, Vegas to me is on the list of teams. And I believe I've gotten no confirmation on this. I think there's four to five teams that Hannafin has signaled. The two of them that are locks are Tampa and Florida. What about Boston? I think the others are Boston, Vegas, and I was told LA. Now, I don't know about the, the interest level of LA to do something, although I think that they need more left shot D um, Vegas. The fascinating part about it is that they've got Alec Martinez coming off the books next year at five to five on the left side. You know, you can basically hand all of Martinez's 5.25 plus a little of your cap increase this summer. And you've got Hannafin taken care of no problem. So that part is intriguing, but really like, Outside of those few teams, four or five or whatever, however long the list is, 
there's a bunch of other teams that are playoff bound teams that don't really need Hannafin. Mm. And then the ones that do need and want Hannafin all don't really like Boston is in the same situation, if not worse than Tampa or Florida in terms yeah, of assets. And prospects, yeah. How do you, how do you do it? I'm just, this is just a real honest conversation of wrong timing, wrong teams equals who knows what we can get in a return. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. complicated. I, I, I feel like uh, we're, we're all sort of bracing for a less than great return, but more than anything, it's undeniably complicated. And I, I just want to throw in a few more factors that complicate it. Let's say oh, you're good. a team that wants to get Noah. Well, maybe we can eat some money for the rest of this year because we want to add another piece. Now you're getting a third team in to broker the deal because Calgary had half and then you, you got your Carolina or Jersey to eat another piece of it. And then the Flames are like, well, shit, we're still in this race. We want to take like uh, someone that could be a four or five for us NHL man back. Like this, all of a sudden, you're talking three teams, multiple parts. Like this, this gets even more complicated. That's than better just for the. That's better for the Flames. The more teams in the mix, the better because it, it's just more that they're getting back. Older right, and then, and then the other complicating factor is like the teams that really want them would love it to come with a, a, a sign and trade as well. Like there's just so many variables to this thing. Agreed, and that's why this is the last real thing remaining on Craig Conroy's plate. And I think a big reason why they got their price that they wanted on Tanev, they got the, the prospect meaning mm -hmm. and they said, okay, let's do that. And then clear the plate for this Hannafin thing, which could take right up until 3 PM Eastern on Friday. I mean, this is of, not a lot, easy. a lot of moving parts, but here's what I would say is you said bracing for a return it's still going to end up being something, um, but let's consider the totality of all of this going back to last June or July to Foley, Zadaroff, Han uh, Hannafin, Tanev, and Lindholm. Yeah. I mean, I think I saw your tweet last week, Pinder. They've basically restocked an entire draft board. Yeah. Plus have gotten some roster players – in Kuzmenko, plus some decent prospects like Sharon Govich, yeah. Wait until, wait until the dust settles, and I would say grade on the whole thing as opposed to just trying to isolate one deal in one moment in time. It's gonna be a lot. Of, did you get a, a little text there? Me? That's, yeah, I just wanted. I saw you kind of glance. Yeah, I at, did. Uh, I would read it. To you, but I don't want to get in. I don't want to get in the road. You're an insider. It's from it's from a GM, but I'm not going to, I can't say All what right. it is. Uh, nice. Yeah. I know it's the ultimate tease. Well, that's good. Uh, the other day I was, uh, won't I share was, I, we've reached this time of year though, where <laughs> not only do I leave my phone on loud when I sleep, which just like absolutely pisses off my wife. But the other day I was, I, before my show, I, was I, I had to hop in the shower real quick, but I said, here, honey, like, can you let me know if anyone calls or, or texts? And she comes and she knocks on the, the uh the window of the shower and she goes bill zito do you know who that is like okay yeah, I guess, <laughs> Name I drop. That. yeah 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 answer that dripping wet all over the the bathroom like hey how's it going hit the camera hit the camera see turn the camera on oh sorry bill. <laughs> oh bill i'm sorry you couldn't have picked the worst time uh so now dailyfaceoff.com, you've got your, who is it? Is Noah Hannafin still atop your, uh, your draft board or your trade board? He's not. Okay. Jake uh, Gensel is the new go. number there one. Go. I guess. And after this weekend, especially, I mean, there was always a small chance. I thought they'd keep him, but geez, what a disaster for the penguins. So now see the flames are, are getting to enjoy the role that they had flipped on them last year. They were the team that just had, devastating losses down the stretch yeah and With now, expectations too yeah yep and now they had they put the the nail in the pittsburgh penguins coffin boy that uh, third period for chris letang oh man are those a couple bad mm. mistakes does he like pepperoni on that pizza or what oh uh, tough day served on a tough platter. day for sure so i guess so we can and go then get shellacked yesterday in edmonton like 
Yeah, so dailyfaceoff.com. I guess I'm curious as we get close to Friday. You mentioned teams on both sides, each conference, and then you can always kind of you know take your pencils. Like, okay, so you've got uh, this guy going here, this guy going here. I just wonder, is is there enough supply to meet the demand? If Vegas and Edmonton and these teams, if they want Colorado. scorers, or what is is the market robust enough that each team will get something or something that'll make them happy, or will we end up seeing? just sit and say, I, I don't know, we could, we could give up a pick for this player, but are we, are we noticeably better if we add this player or not? I just don't know how deep the, what's the market, what's like? the shelf. I mean, there's some good players, but then there's some guys that are UFAs, but what kind of a dent are they going to make for a potential? Yeah. Dent? And I, I think that's a really fair question to ask because we've been talking the last few weeks kind of about how thin the market is, but I think there's enough between Gensel to Foley, Hannafin. I personally I would include Riley Smith there with the playoff success that he's had. Mm -hmm. Like if we're talking real difference makers and I'd add in one more in Pavel Buchnevich. Yeah. If you really squint hard enough, maybe uh Jacob Chikrin moves out of Ottawa, but that's not your classic rental, that's someone that has a full year left on their deal next year. But those are five pretty pretty good players in play right now over the next 5 days that you know i i think between the rangers avs golden knights oilers I, i'll throw in the the red wings as a wild card team um steve eiserman you never really quite know what he's up to um they could all be pretty significant buyers you have your trade deadline walk us through uh, your your day on Friday for people watching online on the YouTubes. What's it going to be? It is five hours of live. I guess you'd call it television. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. Uh, it's eleven Eastern, so nine a.m. Mountain Time, all the way through the deadline, and we'll be going probably an hour after the deadline. Right. So eleven a.m. to four p.m. Eastern, so uh, nine to two Mountain Time, and. It'll be fun. We've got a whole host of people. Tyler Remchuk will be directing traffic and hosting. He's in our, trouble if it's slow. You get to be in the insider box no matter what. He's the guy I, that's got to. Trust me. There's there's been a few times I've been sitting there typing, going, "Holy shit!" Glad I'm not talking. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, our main panel is Carter Hutton and Colby Cohen, and we've got some people popping in from around the league. And should we get a Pinder report? I think we should get a Pinder report on Friday. I could even tighten the mullet up for you if that helps ratings. I'm here the to help. The reports have been completely not what you think lately, but uh, yeah, that would probably be all right. Talk about some crocodiles sports. and kangaroos. Yeah, it's been a lot of kangaroos <laughs> and puking. What did I say to you the other day? I said underrated tweet. The uh, what did you have the the little scoreboard there on the beer stand? Oh, it's a uh, yeah, uh, man. The pocket dogs are always in one. Dogs yeah. up two one late in the game. Late, yeah. just late hanging the on that lead. Can't put teams away. Squeeze Can't one out it. again. It's always a tight one. Well, Frank, I I envision you uh, scrambling out of your uh, out of your shower like George Costanza. Vandalay Industries, Vandalay Industries. As your wife an answers the phone. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, as we get closer to Friday, shower is optional. Fair enough. Fair enough. Appreciate you, pal. We'll uh, we'll be calling on you if anything happens. Have a good one, guys. See ya. There you go, you, Frank Saravelli, Daily Faceoff, dailyfaceoff.com, one of our uh, hockey insiders. A presentation of TELUS. Again, you could win one of six monthly prizes, including tickets to Calgary hockey games, awesome tech like AirPods, Apple Watches, and more. No purchase necessary. All you have to do is fill out a quick survey to enter for your chance to win. Go online, telus.com slash flames contest. Um, a lot there, obviously. Yeah. Uh, just, I guess, going back to the Markstrom stuff, interesting to hear his kind of read there that, and that's sort of I'm, how uh, I'm not trying to say that, you know, see, we told you so or we knew, but it, it just all was kind of Wolf gets jettisoned to Newark where the team was at the time. Because you had a Vladar's, guy that was injured that worked the gate yeah, that night. Yeah, was on the bench the night before, but he's now injured. You bring in Wolf just because. I asked Frank last week on Monday, did he believe that Markstrom was very much of the opinion that he has, was going to New Jersey? And he said, yeah. And that's what I had heard too, is that Markstrom was very much 
resigned is not probably not the right. Maybe he was excited. I don't know, but he, he thought change your whole frame of mind. Right? Yeah. So geared up. Okay. I'm going, I'm going, I'm, we got to pack. I'm because next thing you know, you're not. Yeah. In his mind, his signing off on the trade it means it's done. That was the last That's step. final piece. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and sure. then you start to get your family involved. He's got a young, you, well, and I think he's looking, he's, he, they're competitive right now. The flames, there is yeah. a chance they can make the playoffs. You can sell yourself on it, but I think he's looking at it. Well, okay. We might make the playoffs. Yeah. That's iffy. He's thinking more. I want a few cracks at a Stanley cup. And I don't think he believes he's going to have it here. And I think that's probably what's upset him is that this was one more season. Sure. For the Flames, the market in the summer, Frank just walked through it. It absolutely going is going to be better. Yeah, yeah. It's absolutely going to be better this summer. But for Markstrom, it's not better because that's one less year of a chance to go for a for a Stanley Cup. Run. Sure. I just think about like how life altering those moments are where you get traded and all the things that happen, how chaotic those few days are. And he gets the wheels started on. Yes, that. you get excited. And then about it's like, oh, no, you're playing tomorrow. Like, what? And when I first heard it, I didn't like it. It was the, uh, the way it was handled up top but he did negotiate a no trade i i, I ordinarily be like you know what you're making six sheets a year i'm Shut sorry up. this is a little uncomfortable for you but this goes with the territory and the business mm -hmm. you're gonna be in the trade talks like sorry but that's one of the trade-offs for being heavily compensated yeah. but he did have a no trade clause so i guess i just i didn't because again i think it of well craig conroy conroy fucked this up and i don't i'm with Frank, I don't know that that's exactly what happened. I think Conway I'd asked around, and I think that what we heard today matches with what speculation I heard was was that like don't think this is the GM just because that's the guy that does the trades. Yeah, there's there was a, a lot deal. of there's a lot of check marks and stamps north of Connie, and then suddenly oh there's a lot of re retained money. Well, what's that going to be about? Well, how much does that? What are we talking about? And then yeah, that changes. It can change the deal completely. So. He's in a great spot, though. You said it, Rhett. Like, the team is playing great hockey. It's an exciting building to go to. They they believe. Like, you can't watch the Flames and try to suggest they don't believe. Like, there is still belief in that room that they can go get it, despite moving Lindholm, despite moving Zadorov, despite well, Chikrin's an Tanev's departure. Chikrin's an interesting name for me, because that might be a guy that you target if you're the Flames. If, you, if you're hanging on to Markstrom, but you mm -hmm. know you have to deal Hannafin, you may, and you're like, well... If we're going to battle and try and get in, I got to fill, I got to bring in a, mm -hmm. a body that can play. Yeah. He's going to be expensive though. That's first plus for sure. Um, but you get him for a year. Yeah. And then you're in the same. Yeah, you could, you could for sure. I sort of think we're going to get the, the 2024 version of Yuki Yoki pack. It's possible. Back I'm just yeah. saying it's an interesting name. You is. might want to take a stab on him anyway, because yeah. maybe, maybe he's a guy you do want to. You might like him. Up. He might come in, mm -hmm. play lights out. And you're like, yeah, we'll, we'll pay him. Anyway, I, I'm telling you, man, if, 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 if Connie's trying to one sheet of paper to work a sign and trade and on number two, he's got, wow, well, we need a third party money. And then another one's like, well, shit now, you know, if you're trying to like, this is so complex and I'm not saying he can't do it, but you, I, I think a big part of Tanev getting done was he's like, okay, the offers are what they are. We got a lot of work on this final deal. Let's get this done so we can focus in on all the moving parts here with Anna. There's lots of that. And I think part of it was what I said last week when I said he needs to establish who he is as a GM in the league. Yeah. So that when he calls a guy and says, final offer? Yeah. It, he means it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm done. It's not, don't think that I'm playing around. Like I'm, I'm, I'm making the move. If you're out, you're out. That's mm -hmm. fine. But it's over. Yeah. And then don't cry about it after. Oh, well, if I'd have known, you knew. No, you knew. Told you. Yeah. You knew. You can trust me. You didn't me. trust me. That's yeah. what you didn't do. And I guess I'm curious. for One more you're left on that. If you, were, if you were to guess what kind of, if you were going to be retaining, if the Flames are going to retain on Markstrom. Yeah. What's the ask? What's the ballpark God, going to two, be? If you eat two of the six, that makes life so good for so the next two million. Th this year is kind of easy to, to absorb, but then two million next year and then and two, two million the year after. If if your ownership, that's your money. What are we getting? Yep. It's the answer isn't no, but is this who are we getting? If it's this Holtz, is this 
Is it holds plus a first if there's two years retention? If there's no retention, is it just holds? I don't know what it is, yeah. but it's got to be substantially different. If you're a team like New Jersey, this they see this as a cup contention window. And if they don't have an injured Siegenthaler and Dougie Hamilton and they get some saves, they're right there with Carolina and New York. Like, it's a talented club. And yeah. Frank's saying they're not working hard. I get it. But it's a demoralized group that's not getting saves and they've had some key injuries. They are absolutely good enough to be a cup contender and the the, the betting odds ahead of the season reflected that they just, they need a goalie really, really badly. Because if you trade Markstrom, there's the, the, you can't sell the, Oh, we're still trying to get in. No, that's a death blow to the room and the season. Yeah. And time heals wounds and you'll come back in September and you'll start fresh and it'll be exciting and all of that, but it will be, it'll be a tricky month and a half or whatever it's going to be here. And again, you're going to get a bidding war in the summer. You just are. I mean, it's the, the you talk about the teams we know are going to need a goalie in June. What about the teams that are favored in a series that lose with bad goaltending in round one? Like, no one thinks Edmonton's in the market on a goalie. All it takes is Stuart Skinner shitting his pants against Vegas in round one, and they're in the market for a goalie this summer. It's that simple. Uh, there are going to be teams with expectations that lose because of goaltending. Yeah. They'll be added to that group Frank of teams. Frank is bang on. Unless Jersey's going to knock your yeah. boots off. You hang on. Hang on. Yeah. Yeah, and they count beans. They know what how many people show up. And it helps the longer this team's in the mix. And that group down, I'm sorry that that the group of kids and the coaching staff, they've earned this. They've earned a chance to try to make the play. Yeah, not with Hannafin, where it's like the after no, turns to nothing. He said he's leaving. He that's, yeah. that's but, different. But Markstrom, you can trade this summer, maybe for more. It's a no brainer to me. You say Jersey, look, we're not doing it unless, and you ask for something that's more than what you think this is summer. You traded your number one center. Yeah. And you've had the best stretch in, of the season. Yeah. And, he, and that's not going over well in Vancouver, is it? No. And they've had a rough stretch. I think that. Can, they were so high. Sorry for interrupting you, Ryan. They were playing so well. Like it's it was almost, due. Yeah. Do you remember the Oilers last year? Had They had that unreal lights out stretch heading into the playoffs and they just weren't quite themselves. It's hard to continue. Yeah. There's going to be some ebbs and flows to a season. Vancouver was on a four month. We can't be beat. Yeah. Every fifth shot going right. in heater. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. They were due for some of that. Um, I think also it's not looked like, oh, just put Lindholm with a different winger and he'll go back to 40 goal guy. No, it's not that either. Mm -hmm. And it's not about that, but it's the flames Conrad are might be busy. Sorry, I'm yeah. babbling around here, good. but I love the idea. I've said it all along. You guys have earned it. Huska's done a great job. Yeah. The guys have played hard. The kids have come in. Move, move Hannafin. Go get a who's the D in uh, Philly? Yeah, like Sean Walker, someone sure. Yeah. Let's why not? Like you are going to have to house a yeah. lineup the following year. So even if bring him in, get to, any good? Yeah. Well, good and this is why I, I brought up Tyson Berry last week. Like he is not super sexy, but like that's a guy that if push comes to shove, he can be a number four. And he's a right shot guy, and it's a guy that can run a power play, which Noah's been doing, and you can kind of okay with Uyghur yeah, and Anderson from, from 100 to zero you go from 100 yeah. to 80 I still yeah. wonder if at some point this week if you know you're getting a Hannafin deal done if there's an opportunity to take on a defenseman yes, exactly. to help out another team well, with that's what Barry so you're, is. Not, yeah. you're not spending yeah you're getting the player that you could use for the end of the year yeah. plus an asset with it yeah or or, or or Nashville says a fifth and you're like hell yeah like we've got we've got six seven picks before our fifth rounder hell yeah we'll do yeah that. I suppose in if yeah because they're trying to shed that money Nashville's trying to add and he's a healthy scratch half the time like that it just makes sense to me he's a free agent I'd be summer. saying give us a fifth sure and the difference <laughs> between taking and giving a fifth like we're talking ham sandwiches in five no, years know, like awesome. the point is is that it's that type of asset right yeah uh, we'll do the Pinter report here in a moment. Uh, just a couple things just to kind of, well, I know you'll probably bring it up, but just to put a final thought on the Kipper soft game, then we'll get into tonight's game and move forward. Um, I thought watching that game first period, I don't know what the rink was like, but it felt awfully quiet. It's one, nothing Pittsburgh. It's two, nothing. There's they're being outshot three to one. It felt like, oh boy, this is the air has been let out of the building. They had a really good start, and then the power play killed them. They Classic. come back, they tie it, they take the lead. I think it's important to have nights like that when you have all the alumni, all eyeballs in the franchise. I think those are important games because you you bring up the Mike Smith camping or whatever it is, but to lose on Jerome McGinley night against the wild i just it gives everybody that 
well, we used to be good, but now we're not that kind of team anymore. I just, because I mean, they show, they had you on the screen, they show Kipper and they're showing all the alumni and everybody's there. And this is a great night. We're celebrating the goalie, but we're also celebrating this franchise. If you just go out like a whimper, mm -hmm. it's like, well, maybe they'll never be like that again. Mm -hmm. I thought it was an important thing for the guys in the room, just for everybody yeah. to say, no, no, we can, we can be good again. We're on the right track. We have a new coach, new, met there's, there's reason to believe in this team. I thought it was, I thought there was real value in how they came back amazingly how they came back the cadre goal coleman gets one and then and then sharon govich in a lot of ways i just felt like that's uh, that's a big win for everybody that is a monster stage for a third period comeback and look it's not like guys aren't trying other nights and now oh try tonight but for that type of performance to fall on that night it was it felt like disney ending down by two twice in the game score in the final minute and of course one of the central pieces connie comes in is the guy that gets a pair and the newly anointed captain that wasn't a consensus decision makes two great plays to get them to tie. Like it was just a feel good moment for the franchise. It yeah. really was. They show the, the, the shot of Conroy and Iggy sitting up in the, the press box. there, looking down. Yeah. It's like, yeah, this is, this is your team. It, it everything's new. It, it was just another kind of feel about where this team is going Yeah, and what the, the future could be very bright. It hasn't been great for a while. There was some ups and downs, but it, to me, anyway, it felt like that was that was a big win, despite it being two points that you may or may not need, and it's just another game. Well, uh, in they April, might be March. two points you need. I, we've yeah. thrown in the towel a lot, and it's, it's well, they look so bad the first month it was hard not to. Yeah, right? it's fine, but that message and that comeback, you carry that with you into the next games, like yeah. they, right? Like, usually. Now they've come out and played like crap against you. But I agree with you. I think it was a big message. A lot of lot of eyes on a franchise that's going through a lot of peaks and valleys and change, whatever you want to call it, to have that win and, and show that the guys care. And it looked like they were having fun. So yeah, the still, rest of the league goes, oh, believes, man. oh, you can go to Calgary and win and have fun. Yeah. And And yeah, I think that, I think it probably could be hard as one of those players when you're watching your good friends or good players leaving and no one's coming back in. They don't seem affected by it necessarily. I Caudry still seems energized. I still like the way Uyghur's still playing his balls off. And you know what? I, I thought that Rasmus Anderson had a hell of a game watching him. Now, like he's one of those guys you kind of got to watch for it unless he's getting points. But he's making plays. He's physical. He's strong. I still feel like he's one of the leaders of this team. Mm -hmm. As as you move forward, he's a key part of this team. And I I don't know. I thought there was a lot of individual performances that stood out to me the other night. Nine comeback victories in the third period is second in the league. Three two goal third period comeback victories leads the NHL. That they have not quit at all. This group believes. I'll just, it's not ask rent, but I'll throw it in here and then we'll get to the Pinder report. But somebody was asking when the Sharon Govich goal goes in, you're, we see you on hockey night with Kipper and he kind of leans over and says something. Do you remember what he said to you there as you guys are? I don't no. know how much you remember. Man. Plus he's, it's, he's hard to understand. Yeah. You can't understand it. What's that? Oh yeah. Yeah. Good point by you. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was a fun night. Fun night. Let's, uh, let's get to the Pinder report. It's a presentation of village Honda. Another good day to go test drive a car. You want to see in the over. when yeah. it's when the when the chips are down. How's this vehicle of mine going to handle the conditions in Calgary? Today's the day. 2024 Honda Accord redesigned last year, chosen by Car and Driver Magazine as the number one mid-sized sedan. One of the most reliable vehicles on the road is better than ever. Superior ride quality, reliability, and impressive fuel economy thanks to the EXL Hybrid. Check out that and more at the Northwest Auto Mall. Our buddies at Village Honda and online at villagehonda.com. They present the Pender Report. Let's go back to Saturday night. What a night it was at the Dome and putting a bow on it were Cammie and Kent on Afterburner. Kipper's speech was great. I know we were all talking about, like, are we going to get more than 12 words out of him? But it was fantastic. He really, he celebrated those around him, but he still didn't really let you inside his head, which is super on brand for him, really. He keeps the curtains kind of drawn. And the one moment where you get a glimpse further is when he gets a little bit teary with his family next to him as the banner actually raises. And that was pretty incredible stuff and special to see him honored like that. I know I'm of the generation where kind of coming up, 
we didn't know hockey without Mika Kippersoff. It was like he was just a given in any hockey goalie conversation. And he was a threat night in, night out. And it was just super cool to see. Nailed by Cammy, 70 plus starts. Uh, what, there was no conversation around goaltending. You just had Meek every night and you had a chance to win. I go back. It was one of the, it was one of the most stark realities as someone who at the time we were, we, I was at the rink every day, covering the team every day, part of that whole thing. As soon as Kipper was gone, mm. you come back. Oh yeah. We need to, who's playing net tonight. And then having performances where it's, Oh, goaltending cost us tonight. Yeah. What? Yeah. How this it was in the very foreign territory after living in without uh, getting too deep into it, wasted kind of, you know what I mean? It sounds like an ignorant comment to make almost. It's yeah. winning, it, it's play that should win you something 76 sure. games a year and one long playoff oh. run. Like that's nine years where a lot of turnover in the coach's more. office. To, and look, Daryl did a phenomenal job coaching with that 04 group, but the GM work after you got a lot of guys in the 18th T box, like yeah. McCarty and Amante. And well, you look Ola back Nolan to it. Number two, like, what are you doing? Yeah. Get, put a team in front of this guy. You wonder if, right, if Daryl doesn't stop coaching, if they give Jim Playfair a little more time to breathe, if they don't bring in Mike Keenan, because I think that that was, that was a bad hire, was a sure was. Was, right? Um, and then Bob Hartley, it, it was basically laid out like I'm not coming back if he's still coaching, and they chose Hartley over Kipper. Like that, geez. Yeah, but even on the bigger picture with that group, right? If yeah. I don't know which of the three, you probably think just let Daryl coach. Let somebody Darryl else. Daryl should have stayed coaching, hundred percent. There should have been a different GM, and if he picked, yes. if he if if he wanted to be part of all those conversations, he should. They should have said, "Listen, you have to coach." You're the G assistant GM. Well, you pick the GM so you can yeah. work with this person. But remember at the time, it seemed like this Mika Kiprasov came in. You brought in Marcus Nilsson. You brought in these guys that all Billy had a, resur a resurrection yep. in the playoffs. Chris this Simon. guy is brilliant. Yeah. Yes. Whatever trades you want to do, we you have full carte blanche. Mm -hmm. At the time, it seemed like he was a, a, a whisperer. But, but and part of the reason he made some of those deals, though, is because we felt we were that close. Yeah. And you, then it turns out you aren't that close. You're actually going in the wrong direction. This, the, the game changed. You, you forget yeah. that part. Like Yeah, the rules was, changed in that lockout. The lock rules changed. The that next last year. year killed you guys. I don't think it was a good thing. And the other thing that, that I, I, we still talk about is the GM could have put pen to paper with Dion Phaneuf when you needed D badly. I said that. To, I gave Dion shit the other day. But you did. What the hell's wrong with you? Could have won a Stanley Cup, but come in. He God, he was good. So what was so? Just for people that may not know what the hell we're talking about, people he remember was drafted the summer prior. You've never seen Daryl Sutter smile publicly except when he drafted Dion Phaneuf. Yeah. He couldn't have gone on the stage quick enough to say the name and shake his hand, and give him a bear. So hug. They draft Phaneuf, and he has a great year in Red Deer. Hasn't signed yet. You're gonna sign the kid, and now you're looking at this playoff run where it's like, man, Gear gets hurt, Monty gets hurt at one point, I believe. Lidman. Uh, Gauthier gets hurt. Gauthier. Lidman gets hurt. Like, it happens. You could use a D like Stein, the bleeping kid. He's, 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 and of course, Dion not lacking confidence. It wasn't like the lights are going to be too bright for him there. No, oh, he, I, I, I've, I've said it a million times, fully convinced he comes in and absolutely dominates, destroys guys with hits. He would have yes. crushed guys coming through the middle. He was so good. It would have changed everything. I, I, I believe that. Everything. We win a cup if they sign Dean. No, oh. and just kind of, did they have a rookie cap? Like, was there not some max deal that you I would just give expected. to all first rounders? I'm at sure that point? they were fighting over like bonus B. Items it had to have been just that doesn't hidden. matter. Yes, like hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah. Because you think of, remember Kale, because Kale McCard did it. He was a first round pick, hadn't signed. Colorado's in the playoffs. Sign him. Game in, four. Game came three. Came in and played, yes, and he was just yeah. fine. I'm, I'm, I've always said that too. I agree that I don't know. Maybe you win, maybe you don't. But Brennan freaking Evans. You can just say that. It's yep. like, I don't give a shit how good Dion He was going to yeah, be as that, good as Brennan. No, yeah, much better. Yeah, yeah, not even close. Because there was a lot of right, times. We didn't expect that we would need him till. Like, I was only desperate for him to get signed after the San Jose because we were beat to piss and yeah. Reg was hurt. And I'm like, yeah. you, can, I forget. Like, I was out against Detroit. That's second round. There's, there was a lot of hockey to be played. They could have had him around for all of that. Yeah. Well, and 
you had such a long road to get to the final compared to Tampa. They kind of breezed through and you guys went seven games, six games, seven games, and all three were division leaders. Like it was the hardest road to a final you could argue in terms of number of games and caliber of opponent that we've seen in that format of the playoffs. Yeah. It, it, uh, it was, you were making life as hard as it could be on yourself to get that far. One more D man and a guy as impactful as Dion in his first few years. And what did oh. he say? And you think for Dion, it's, you could, click a year off of yeah, your what the hell was happening it should have absolutely made sense for him so did he when you give him shit did he uh did he apologize or what did he, uh, he didn't apologize no, he had a good I, chuckle yeah, yeah. Was like, oh, yeah, I know. yeah. yeah. Mm. yeah. let's move let's right. look at this year's team that maybe could get on a cinderella run here's the wild card standings fellas is um yeah like look at that nashville club eight wins in a row Buggers. you subtract uh what five to eight points in there if they paid something like 500 Wait. and oh yeah the flames are in great spot Instead, they are still chasing. Now, they do have a couple of games in hand, you'll note, but uh, that is that is a bit of a gap there. Seven back. Yeah, I guess they're not chasing, trading Soros, if that's the case, probably. Yeah, no, no. I, I, again, mm. these goalies are hard to find. I don't know why that makes a lot of sense mm. until you see what Askarov is at the NHL level, but okay. Okay. Schedule looks like this, fellas. It is the Kraken tonight. And then the vaunted Southeast Division road trip. Remember that old division Washington was around with these clubs? Uh, it's been a tough one the last few years. It almost broke the Oilers a few years ago. Tampa and Florida, and then a back-to-back -back with Florida and Carolina. Matinees on a weekend, and the deadline falls between that Thursday night in Tampa and Saturday in Florida. A very eventful uh, three games and four nights there. You said you weren't going to take Hannafin on this, but you absolutely have to now because oh, you just it you saves just, jet fuel. Yeah, yeah. you're going to take him with. I you. suppose, yeah, drop I, him off there with one. No, of I'd say you're not with us. You're you can get your own commercial flight. <laughs> Or tell I got you one right by the washroom at the back. Sorry, uh, last season. Yeah, or tell them to send a PJ up to get you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, That's a good way to make a first impression. You want to resign with us? Come yeah. here's the PJ. That'll be interesting to see what they do this week. Where where they are on Hannafin. Kind of feels like it's a it's going to go down to the wire. Just the more you talk with Frank and how complex it is. Yeah. So yeah. Especially if you got to get a third party in there and you're working on a sign and trade like an extension. Jeez. You just hope that you get to if you're Conroy, you get to a point where you're you're mostly satisfied with the return. No yeah. chance he's sitting tonight. I don't think so. He's been so durable. I don't really see that. Unless you're really close. If you're in the final, you're two days. You're two games. Regardless, away, why would you do it? If you if you are even eighty percent thinking you're trading him, I I, I understand what you're saying. Uh, tell me which player from the third pair is coming don't to care. the top four. Don't care. That's okay. So game. then so then now you're Big telling picture, your coach, right? Big picture. If you think you're getting a if first coach, round you asset, think your coach is an idiot and doesn't see what's coming. Doesn't matter. No, I get it. I'm just saying you might end up getting a number four I, back in this I trade, don't, and you don't have to play with I a don't, Hall yeah. in your top four but, or a Gilbert in your top four. For one game, we just went through what happened in the playoffs. Yeah. You, these yeah. guys may have to have important minutes at some point. Yeah. So no, it's you're not, you're playing devil's advocate, right? And I'm not. I'm playing. I devil's think he advocate. plays tonight. I Absolutely. do too. No, I'm not saying does he play. I'm saying the 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 thought process behind not playing him makes perfect sense to me. I think he's playing tonight because that's where this team's at right now. I think he's, he's playing durable. I and think the thought process should be. I think there should be a very real conversation over, you know, you're trading him. Yeah. He's and you know, you're getting against Tampa Bay, right? He, you're getting somewhat of a significant return. Oh yeah. If it's Chris Tana, what are the next, I'm, what do these around. games mean? Well, ask the coach and players what it means. I mean, they believe they can get in. That's what it means. I'm I'm having a conversation with you though. If we're in the Conroy chair, yeah. So why well, would I you think risk it? When why we, it's Seattle on a Monday in a season we're not making the playoffs, and we well, potentially risk a player and a first round pick to play Hannafin tonight? What? Like, I don't give a shit about. It's two different things. I'm running the team. Because I have a long-term plan for this team, and mm -hmm. I have to manage my. Yeah, I get that. My so, AHL so, team is down the hall. I just Sorry, wonder coach. where does it change? Like, why'd you play him Saturday? All those things you said are still true Saturday. Like, how far back do we go? I don't know the answer because you're right; it's unnecessary risk. But at the same time, it's like, when did we start having a problem with him playing it? So why did well, he play Saturday? All the same things you said I, are still true. I, yeah, I it did. is. I mean, so yeah. I don't know where you draw the line, I guess, is what I'm saying. The closer you get, I think the less. Yeah. yeah. Because so, the less games you don't play with them. The less risk. I get it. The, do you know what I mean? Like, what? But no, but what you're saying to yeah, sell yeah, the coach. Yeah. The fewer games without him, the better you're going to be. And if you do think, okay, we got a guy that can 
masquerade as a four for two months coming back. If we swap on a Hannafin and have him back, we might even not even miss a single game without a guy in the top four. We don't have to go Bahal Gilbert on it yeah. for 20 minutes. Because there's no, there's no chance he's resigning. No. You know you're trading him. He has five points in his last three games. I, he's done everything he needs to do to yeah. show everyone. Nobody knows. And, and you're right. Yeah. What's what's the magic number? Is it three games? Is it two games? Does he stay home from the road trip? It's I would conversations. Be staying at home till we trade you. But I feel like I, I now you're weak of. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's crazy to say we're we're pulling you out and we you're not going on the road trip because what if we I, I don't know I just think well, I can bring him on the road trip if you're not playing him let's yeah. drop him off in Tampa we're going ah. right there yeah, yeah. 2026 first overall and this uh, this Isaac and how Howard much what's a, what's a Michigan what's a flight to uh, Tampa worth because if we're flying Hannah in there we need to be reimbursed for bringing him down here <laughs> save every penny right and then per diem. Because we fed him. We fed him. We fed him today. We put him on the plane and we did feed we, him. We sent him halfway. We need 50 bucks for the other half of the per diem. And he's got like four sticks <laughs> and his gear. Going to need a little extra. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. It's getting close. Friday again, 1 p.m. Mountain is the deadline. And uh, we have said, whether we hold ourselves to it or not to be seen, if Hannafin has not moved by Friday, we'll take this thing right to the wire, which is 1 p.m. We can take that back. You want to take that back? Take that back. I said we reserve the right to pivot. Yes. If need be. Yeah. And if he's gone uh, Tuesday, get her done, Connie. Let's go. If Connie. he's gone Tuesday, I'll talk to you. <laughs> yeah. See you next week. Yeah. See you next. See Tuesday. you next Tuesday. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Uh, Flames news this morning. Connor Zeri was in and out on Saturday. One shift in the third. Went down the tunnel a couple times. Made official today, day-to-day -to -day upper body, and Matthew Coronado has been having a heck of a season. His first pro season with uh, the Wranglers for the bulk of the year. He's coming up. How he fits in, where he plays, remains to be uh, determined. We'll see what happens in, in skate this morning. But uh, Kuzmenko had returned after the illness cost him a couple. Hunt's been bouncing up and down between the fourth line and that Sharon Govich line. And uh, now Pelche skated a bit with the Kadri line when. Zeri wasn't there. There's all mm -hmm. of a sudden, where do we put all these pieces? It's a lot of wingers, which is also another conversation that we can have this all week. All summer. All summer we can have that conversation. It, they, they have two natural centermen that are NHLers. The rest are wingers or wingers playing center, and the guys they don't have room for on the roster that are the best prospects are also wingers, a.k.a. Coronado. It's a lot of wingers. Because what if, again, I guess, if you're trying to make the playoffs, then I just very much of the – big picture moving forward we're not making the playoffs this year mm -hmm. and, uh, if we do that's great and by all means play hard but if the the winger market or if you've got vegas and all these teams looking for for a player yeah and you, you feel like andrew mangiapani african mangiapani makes so much sense honestly well and to further your point though it, it's not about your wingers getting you into the playoffs. no you don't have an no. iggy out there carrying yeah. you on his back you have a goaltender that's gonna play his ass off and a team that's playing hard, yeah. that's what's getting you to the playoffs. And a single individual forward on this team is not the difference no. between players. You know the spot on the roster I worry about the least? Who's playing on the left side of Coleman and Backlund? Yeah. That's the spot everyone's going to be just A-OK. -okay. Pinder, we saw you in Jasper. I just you're doing say, great. Like you're, I could slide in there. You and like, really? Okay. You, or you know what? I got Mandeep's number. Oh, deeper yeah, for we can sure. get him in there. Yeah, but you got so good zip. I you know what? You got a little bit more stink in your game than Mandeep. I think yeah. he's a little more gentlemanly. You are not a gentleman. Well, his hands are much better, too. It's not even close. Okay. Uh, so Coronado, we'll see if he gets in tonight. Here's Seattle, what do they look like? Well, they kind of look like last year's Seattle as well. McCann's a nice player. Beneers is their best young player. Everly's up this summer, fellas. Been a very good get for them in uh, the expansion draft. Schwartz, the Saskatchewan boy. Wenberg, Bjorkstrand, guys. Ely Tolvanen came over as a Waymer claim last year. Blake Coleman's old uh, Stanley Cup linemate. Yanni Gord is there. Ty Cartier, Tatar's on the fourth line. Nice little get from Colorado. Yamamoto, the former Oiler, and Brandon Tanner. Those are all NHL guys. It's just all names, they all yeah. look like second and third lines, don't they? Yeah, most of the third. No, the defense is pretty good. Vinny Dunn, uh, offensively gifted defenseman. They got the two pillars, Larson and Alexiak. Our boy Bill Borgen, which is always the joke about the expansion draft. Yeah. And uh, Dumoulin and uh, former Oiler Justin Schultz. They got a few former Oilers in there. Yeah. Yeah. And indeed. That's what they look like. Uh, the goalies, it'll either be uh, Decord or Grubauer. Those are their two. 
Uh, I think when we look at this team, I'm like, why are they so mad? It's because their big free agent signing after the expansion draft was Grubauer, who has been about the 58th to 64th best goaltender since then in the league. Mm. Mm. There's two a team. Swing and, and a miss. Yeah. Only four years left on that deal. If I, five, three, four. Mm. Lots. Let's move to, uh, well, physicality and hockey, boys. If you like it, it's back. And if you like it, you love Calgarian Matt Rempe. Before we start it, three fights in five games wrapped up last week when he got the wrong end of a scrap with Matthew Olivier. They played Columbus again a few days later. No tilt, which made sense. He had the black guy. And also what made sense, they were going to Toronto on Hockey Night in Canada where Ryan Reeves was waiting on Saturday. Yeah. My goodness, it's been a while since we talked about heavyweight fighters and the schedule lining up. We're back, Red. I'll comment on it after, but well, I'll say it now. I thought it was ignorant of Reeves. He knew that kid was tired and went after him. Let's have a look. At the bench. Well, I guess he got to go ahead. A lot of people have anticipated this. Right at Reeves and the new heavyweight on the block. Big fellas here, Rats. Goodness. And for Rempe, by my count, four fights in seven games and a few devastating hits as well. Bastion got him a match penalty against Jersey. A fight, his first shift in the NHL. This is quite a start to a career. I mean, big man. I'm kind of with you. I'd. I'd See, I've only seen the fight. The context is important. He catches him at the end of the shift, you're saying? Yeah. Uh, and so it's a greasy move or it's an incredibly Rempe veteran was move. Rempe was changing. That's, and Reeves just got on? No, he'd been on a little bit. Okay. But Rempe was definitely at the end of a shift. That's it was tough. actually going off. And yeah. Reeves is like, let's go. And Rempe's actually looking at the bench going, yeah. Uh, is this my only chance? I got to take yeah, it. I don't want to look bad. Uh, yeah. I would do it. I should be changing. I was mm -hmm. like. Mm. And then Reeves gives the big flex after. Okay. All right. But you know what? He showed up, and he oh, did yeah. as well as you would probably hope against that's a against good. Reeves. That's kind yeah, of a win because he is a an fresh ramp. I I wouldn't be scared to put cash behind him. And one of the things talking with Jay uh, Rose on the other podcast, we've done a lot of Rempe stuff the last two weeks. And if you want more Rempe content, go find the podcast wherever you get your podcast. What is the podcast? It's called Department of Discipline. You got to say it. He has not. Look at Red giving yeah, you tips on how to promote a podcast. He has not played defense at all. Like with that reach, he could do this, and no one can hit him. That was the first he's fight got, you started to see that a little. If he learned how to throw a – like he was doing it a little bit, all he would have to do is jab his way yeah. into victory. Yeah. And so that's – he's been happy to trade blows, which that's probably something we're going to see him get a little smarter about picking his spots to trade swings versus like, you can't hit me. Yeah. Now I'm going to set up my bomb. But God, what a star all of a sudden. You, what a place to be doing it. Well, this is what I mean. Yeah. On Broadway? Broadway. For a Rangers yeah. club that's like a considered a cup contender. The outdoor game is the debut. Reeves on hockey night. Like, this is incredible yeah, stuff. It really the is. Delorier fight is one of the best we've seen in years. There is something special about being in New York. Yes. We saw with Jeremy Lin, Lin Sanity. When, you, when, mm -hmm. you're something, when you're an athlete or something happens to you in New York, uh, I don't know if it makes them fair weather or bandwagon, but... Fans will go from zero to a hundred yeah. in loving you like that. And I guarantee you that's what it's like. You've probably got Rempe billboards. It's probably going crazy in New yes. York right now. Not just the fights as well. The ice time isn't huge, but when he's out there, it looks a little like this. A welcome to Toronto, Ilya Labushkin, and welcome to the trainer's room. Uh, I mean, that is a 240-pound man barreling in at full speed. Goodness. Come Head on. up. Kind of left the skates there, maybe. Yeah, it could have been a charge, but hit, I think uh, the Rangers would take that charging penalty in a series, wouldn't they? There goes Absolutely. a D-man. Yeah. Impressive player. Let's get to uh, NFL. We've been showing you some combine clips. We showed you the 366-pounder running a 40. What about the fastest guys? Uh, this is quick. That's pretty smooth, fellas. <laughs> Four, two, one. Four, two, one. So are we going to the NFL or the Olympics? Like, what's what's your pick? 
More money in the NFL. You can do too. both. Well, who's the guy that played for the Bills? He was an Olympic hurdler and a wide receiver. That was yeah. a few years ago. Marquise Goodwin, I want to say, something like that. Yeah, he's not yeah. a player anymore. No, he sure isn't. Yeah. Again, being quick is nice. It does not mean you're going to be a good wide receiver. Yeah, how are your hands? Yeah, we were anyway. saying earlier, does anyone remember Jerry Rice's 40 time? Did they exist back then? We don't care because he caught the damn ball. Yeah. Um, to the dumb shit. Let's go. Let's go to the slopes. Rhett's back out west. He's like about three stories to get there, right? Get, flames. Uh, Did we even talk? Did you got a lot of flames again? in there. All right. It's always the snowboarder's fault, Dean. That's all you need to know when you get to the hill. Right. Uh, this time, it absolutely is all the snowboarder's fault. This is a T bar under the chair. And it's okay. Just all you have to do is get out of the way. Oh, dear. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hey, yeah, oh, oh, the run, bud. Stupid snowboarders, eh? You ruined. Take that chair next days. time, by the way, too. Don't take that T bar. It's the move. Yeah. And nope. see, this has to be a snowboarder's fault as well. I don't know how or why, but like a snowboarder must have told him that the timing was looking good because this skier comes barreling down. It's a lot of speed heading into a jump, Dean. I don't know. I think he needs to carry oh, a gap or something like that. Oh, oh now if the snowboarder told him the chair was there. It's a damn snowboarder's fault. Oh. In fairness, you probably could have stood right there. So you would never think that you're going to hit that chair. That's a good air. <laughs> the only thing better would have been if he landed on it and just stuck the landing sitting on the chair. <laughs> See the lines, boys! <laughs> oh. uh, have you seen this farming video game? I think we showed you a clip earlier where it's just Wait. a combine. My kid plays this in, like... And it's like constant. Normally, video games are renowned for what like is it, action. Is it Heyday or whatever? It's yeah, I don't know what the name of this game. Too. I don't know if it's the same game you're talking yeah. about, but my kid got a farming game for. Oh, look. So at this, this. I, I don't know if this is the Hilton Farm where our boys at uh, Origin Brewery are. But Bill's house. Is Bill? Is this your plot? Hello, Bill. Look at the setup here. And <laughs> it's, like, it's like we're just up in the winter. Yeah, you yeah. miss combining. You can get right in there. And he's, he's got. Oh, yeah. Sure. It's simulator. He's got all the iPads at the fake levels. Look at this. This. I'm sorry. I love farming, but this is the biggest waste of effing time you could. And money. I think that does not look cheap. Yeah, that's. Uh, you gotta really like it. And I, like Bill here. Not liking it. That's fake. You might as well go be a hired man well, and make can't. some money. Well, this least. is my point. You can't be combining it when there's two feet of snow it's in March. Minus twenty, right? Go to Australia. Yeah, you, can you go farming? Yes, it's different seasons, different countries. Feel free. Now, Wait. Bill's in studio with us. Bill, Bill you combine. Now, yeah. do you ever miss the combine? Because it's huge hours in the fall for for harvest season. Do you ever miss it in the winter where you wish you could just play video games or you combine for hours or no? Yeah, yeah, there probably are, I'm now, telling Bill you, there are days. Oh, it's a heated every, seat. My old man says yeah. that he still misses. That's the worst. He, every yeah. every <laughs> harvest, harvest season, he's be like, pretty oh, quiet in the combine right now. <laughs> Wouldn't be a whole lot of people yipping at me if I were in the combine <laughs> right thought now. About that. Oh, that's uh, winter lunch. wheat, babe. I got some winter wheat out there. Lunch out minus out 20. The, lunch out in the field. Oh, oh baby. Uh, now, one of the things we miss about uh, this time of year is you can't golf. You know, put a snow. Can't do it. You got to travel to golf. And in the summer, you can golf almost anywhere. Look at this guy's practicing on the lake. Love to see this on his dock. The raft. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> so what went wrong? Let's. Uh, it looks like a sniper hits him. He's mad at someone else. Well, his rib went out. Did he, I was going to say, it looks like there was some internal. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> Yeah, at the back end of the swing, something kind of kind of popped there. I've, I've tried to uh, introduce a four-letter word to North American society. Appreciate Dean's that, been giving yeah. me a lot of pushback, and we've got a clear confirmation that it's an A-OK -okay word to use in Australia. But I want to introduce you to another country. Mm. See, now in hockey, Great Britain's growing in popularity. they got a big game here. So this I don't know if you call it the British national team or the Great Britain. Uh, the captain's arousing speech to... Fire up the fellows before the game, Rhett. Have a listen. Should win. Great Britain does to jump ahead of Great Britain as far as the standings are concerned. Take it to these cunts. Come on, boys. Should win. Great Britain does to jump ahead of Great Britain as far as the standings are concerned. Take it to these cunts. Come on, boys. 
it seemed to work. Uh, they seem motivated. They, oh yeah, they were charged. They, they were pumped yeah. up. And it is Team Great Britain. There you are. How about that? Good luck to those fellows. Like the camera guy, even if he. Oh boy. Geez. Oh jeez. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. Now you guys remember Buddy Robinson? Our first introduction to him was a preseason game when Peter Marr was doing games at the radio station. Mm -hmm. Buddy Robinson. Buddy. And we had a little buddy skit, and then he actually hung around the org for a bit and played decently. They had him on the line with Johnny, ironically, because he's 6'6", and he and Johnny played high school hockey together in Jersey or something like that. Well, Buddy's still playing, believe it or not. Oh, Buddy. He is over in the KHL. Let's have a look. Oh, Buddy's the tall one. That's your warning. So in not in, in green. In what? He's bending over at the same height. You want a piece? He's going to be a piece. He's going to be a piece. That's a bloody buddy. And then later on, he, gets, he wants some more. Look, at, when did Buddy turn into Chris Simon? But that was the knock on Buddy is that he didn't play with enough emotion and meanness. I, he, that's not unfair. And it's whatever they put in the water in uh, Magnitogorsk or whatever, he is. Whew. Yeah, he's not doing right that dumb. In NHL, though. Didn't. You know, yeah. If he gets back, he might. Not sure if he would have a go with him. Uh, I mean, now that he sees what the next best league of the world looks like, I maybe he is more willing again. to fight. Like, he really... Bring it, bring it, go. Bam. And look at the reach on him. He knows. Bang. Oh, the gloves aren't even off. Jeez. I don't know that they were going to come off either. This uh, yeah. fella looked like he was happy to happy stay to just What's that thing? You fuck around and... You find out. Yeah, that's what that was. Yeah. There. Okay, we'll keep moving. Um... It's yeah, there was a chart there, yeah. and as you go up the up the y axis, you the, go the out around meets up with the finding out. So, the more you f around, the more you, you find out. That's right, got it. Uh, these guys were finding out about uh, jumping. Now, hang on here before we start. This looks like a bit of a party, got some gals there, got some fellas, got to get noticed, and you do want to get noticed, but you also have to understand now, is that a diving platform? That is, that is the uh, roof of oh. a facility. Got and uh, not to be jumped off of because right below it is the, uh, well, very hard, what would you mm. call it? The pool deck. Let's have a look. Oh, Careful now. Like, honestly, it's Pretty good. Okay. Well, never mind. I take it all back, Dean. That's oh, totally fine. I don't Nothing know why you would show this video. Oh. 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 Are you dead? Jesus. No, not dead. He's moving. And then the girl's like, I'm ready. I'm ready. And they're like, honey. You didn't see what we just saw. <laughs> Don't do it! Oh my god! Oh my god! That guy's too nice. Be like, yeah, do it. He's, he's oh, oh, Jack, come on! Saw it once, buddy. All right, uh, we've got a biker we want to show you out here on Marlo. Yeah, the, the bike lanes. The I think boys alley. Um, this looks dangerous. I don't know how you get good at this because I feel like you got to fail to get good. Oh, the fence. Oh, God damn it. That's how hmm. everybody. Oh, and right in the throat. That's a lot of people lose their lives on the snowmobiles, dude. Oh, it's true. Not doing the wheelies so much. It's no, the. Uh, you don't want the barbed wire in the neck, do you? Did he, like, did he not see it coming? Well, it looked like it was just that plastic tape. It he wouldn't be a big deal. The but the, the concrete yeah. was ending. Like, it was, looked true. like a dead end road. What yeah, the age he was is this guy doing? In too hot. I don't know. At least the scooter guy knew what he was in for because you'd scout out a jump before you did it, right? Mm -hmm. Let's have a look. It's a lot of stairs. I don't know where he's. Oh, sorry. Right. One more here. Oh, this is our yeah. river jumper, right? Now remember, you got to pull your chute, right? Uh, pull your chute, right? Pull your chute, right? Oh, dear. That's about as ladies you can pull that and still live, I'm hoping. Yikes. Hmm. Now, was that you in Australia? No. No, it wasn't. I jumped off a bridge in South Africa. I, mean, bungee I was a parachute. <laughs> That's a better idea. Someone that does know when to open the parachute. Here's our scooter guy. Oh. Yeah. That was going to be a lot. That's about two stories. I love the sound effects. I love that. It's not sound effects. Uh, uh, you have a hard time having sympathy there, right? It's two stories. I don't know how you story, think it's going to end. You got hurt. No, I will say but, this. It does look like he lands it and his machine fails on well, it. Okay, a couple things. I'm curious as to what the upside is financial. Like, is yeah. it a, do you know what I mean? Is that like, high grand? What are you getting there? It, yeah, like, okay, I'm going to take on oh. this challenge because I'm going to put a video out 
and I'm going to get rewarded with. Well, there are some sponsorships. Maybe mm, you get fame from, and uh, fortune. Sure. You know, look, but it be... seems like there's an awful lot of that. And I don't know what, what cost or what price I would need to be paid to risk this. Watch his knees. That is, into the concrete. that is no good. That is a big drop. It's a major oof, fellas. Um, I've been granted an exemption. I ran it uh, past the leader here in the boomocracy. I oh. have exemption for potential rat video. Mm. But it's I've, it's been promised. I thought it's you said rap. Aggressive. I love a good rap. <laughs> <laughs> that maybe this is a big mouse. This is New York. Yeah. Oh, it's on his chest. Oh, that's not his maybe teacher. that's his pet. Maybe it's a gerbil dean. That's not a rat. I have not used my exemption. Oh, all right. Okay. Oh, God. that's enough of that. Is he dead? Oh, well, it's waking up pretty quick here. What they used to do is let the rats eat the face off people. Oh, dear. Work. Okay, that's enough of that. Finally. Which show was that? Was that Rambo? Part two? I, when they're I, in the jungle and they got captured and they had the rats in the bag and they put right, it in oh, the, the, the rat bag. I don't like that at all. What I have here is a pillowcase full of mice. <laughs> Boom. Yeah. No, uh, took the young men to Australia. I want to say before the pandemic, January of about 2020. Does that sound right? Before we went down to Florida. Before, yeah, yeah. Um, we went to the Australia Zoo, which is old Steve Irwin, the crocodile hunter guy. Uh, his zoo that he started and used to run with his family. Season peas. Season peas, indeed. Damn stingray, right? Manta ray? What was it? And uh, they had this monster, monster crocodile. Like we're talking over a ton we're talking like 24 feet long whatever it is in me like crazy like a possible huge crocodile uh that video um i saw reminded me of him so let's have a look at it this is just a, a little inlet somewhere i'm sure in australia see i just Amazing. splash the water dean and it's for that splash. See if that's anything happens oh i see something where it's a lot go. like now you start moving the size of this thing do you know Oh, oh my god. god! It's huge! God! That's a dinosaur. Oh, look at it. That is totally a dinosaur. Oh. It's just, how are you comfy that close? I would be whacking that guy's schnoz. That's not a high fence either. Look at that right beside him there. Is that what's holding that thing in? Jeez. And that, that man, the, the gator, has been eating well. There's yeah, there's good. Uh, that's not wasting away. That's a winner. Mama Crocodile's cooking some nice meals. This guy is not leaning out. Look at that. In terms of the food chain, he's near the top of it. That's he's got Ralph. a good, good belly on him there. That's an apex predator, Dean, right there. You're not eating salad and getting that big. I would. You know what? I, the more I, now I'm on Team Gator. Get him. I I saw you gearing up for that. Go You're get like, him. This ass hat is going into the crocodile's house yeah. to bother him. Go get him. All right, mate. Careful. That's your pinned report. Big, big, big crocodile. Village Haunt, a huge selection of pre-owned vehicles. All makes, all models, all budgets. Over 90 units on site. Access to more than 500 more inside the dealership group, which means if you go there and say, oh, I was kind of looking for a... Uh, one of you know, these. One of these. Oh, we have those. Yeah, we got Oh, one. but I didn't... I don't see it. Well, we're in part of the dealership group. There's dealerships all over the place. Let me go on to the... Uh, yeah, we have, uh, we have 73 of those. Would you... Uh, Perfect. What That's color do you like? Uh, it's deal it's why Village Honda should be your dealership for life. They're worth the trip, located in the Northwest Auto Mall. And very proud. We're gonna see Anthony tomorrow, by the way. Just heads up. Is that accurate? Mm -hmm. We're excited. What a sweet. He was supposed to be at the game on Saturday under the weather. So speedy recovery. Peas and peas, Dad. I know. Well, don't come tomorrow if you're still no, he'll be back. You're still be see, there it is. Stay home. Uh, you're not gonna be sick, are you? <laughs> Uh, do we have something more? Yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah. still. Yeah, yeah. It hasn't changed. Yeah. I've been telling you about for a week. Start of a new week means get to Wendy's mm. and the Survivor Pool. It continues. It starts every week. I went this morning. Com. You go to dailyfaceoff.com, right uh, top right corner. You're going to see the link to the Wendy's Survivor Pool, mm. and you get ten options. I'm not telling you which one I took today. But if it hits, then I'm still alive for tomorrow. And then the day after, and then the day after is how you survive. It's how it's a, it's a survivor. Just cool. don't, don't be wrong. And I'm hardly ever wrong. So that's a this game's tailored for me. Mm. Uh, you can win real food with the daily face-off survivor. 
For those of you who smoke the competition, Wendy's is rewarding you with weekly prizes. They'll have you winning despite your lack of team building skills. Download the Wendy's app, score yourself 150 bonus reward points on your first order. A little sweet victory from the mouth-watering jaws of defeat along with some fresh, never-frozen beef. Sign up to play daily face-off to win weekly prizes like the spicy chicken sandwich from Wendy's and the Wendy's app. Sando. Yeah. It's a good one. Never misses. No, nope. does spicy it? chicken I never the other day. Misses. It's, it's, it's always... an Aussie brad. It's just they've had a thousand. I don't know what the bun is, but the bun is key. It's always it's always soft. It is nice and soft and fresh, cushiony. And uh, the spice. So oh, my, my spicy chicken wasn't as spicy today. Oh, it was too spicy. No, they just nail it every time. Yeah. See if there's any flames in here. There is. Yes, Ooh, there is. I don't know. That's a scary one there. Over what is it? Half power play goal. Got to get on the paper. Gonna need you to get on the paper. Hmm. Toronto or Boston? You pick one of those teams. Florida mm -hmm. over three and a half. There we go. Okay, we're good. It's the Rangers. Six games in the NHL tonight. Uh, five non. Five. Games. Okay, five. Yeah, yeah, five games without uh, without those guys. Yeah. Uh, we may as well look at our betway bets. Okay. Because I went inside to the uh, the the schedule tonight. Yeah. The NHL schedule. Yeah. That's where I got my betway bets. You're looking at the schedule. Yeah. Okay. And I decided, well, what am I going to do? I'm going to go on my Betway app, which I have on my phone, which I recommend you do. Yeah. And then I, you know what I did? I bet the responsible way. Good. Yeah. That's the only way I do it. It's how Betway wants you to do it. So that's the, the only way, way I do it. Oh, look Seattle at, at Calgary. Hannafin, one plus points. He has been almost automatic, it feels like. Five, in, days, yeah. five in his last three. Wow. So I'm getting plus money on a point. Not a power play, just get a point. Right, I can't work with this guy. On one hand, he's telling me to scratch Hannafin tonight. Don't play him. On the other hand, yeah, he's I wouldn't not him to get points. What the hell's going on here? Yeah. Well, Please. I don't play him, and then this is just the get refunded on I that get, bet. Yeah, <laughs> not gonna lose. Uh, and then Florida at the Rangers in in New York in on New Broadway. York, and Florida is uh, is favorite. So uh, yeah. hey, why not? Give me the Rangers at home plus one hundred five on a money line. So basically, just win, baby. Yeah. Just win for the Rangers. I looked at that one too. I'm going to go out two in game bets for the Flames. I love uh, Igor to stay hot. He had the two goals. Not as many shots at center, but I feel like he's warming up here, fella. Uh, the big goals, two and a half shots. I'll hit the over for plus 115. And uh, Seattle just narrowly got beat by Edmonton before arriving here. A 2 1 loss. Markstrom's been great. Seattle is a pretty stout defensive club with that blue line. I'm going to take the Flames win and the under. For a special plus 350 bet. Under what? Five and a half. Okay, let's see. So three two would be under, four three would be over. Oh, because it's over five and a half. But yeah, I'm just sort of thinking scores. So if it, it feels like a three two night, that's the under. And that's kind of where I'm at with these two clubs. What three one? Sure, yeah, I'll take that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as long as the flames money line is plus three fifty. Marky shut up. Jersey, give us eight best prospects in your next four first rounders. Let's go. There you go. That's the uh the betway bets of the day right there like that you can use them or you can tell us to go pound sand whatever you want to do rangers is dogs at home it is florida but that's it is that's a banger of a game yeah. tonight there's a few of them let's go okay. let's go those are the betway bets get that betway app get it on your phone get it wherever you get whoever you want just get it and then bet the responsible way with our buddies at betway uh want to remind you about the service credit union big share it is back for the sixth year your chance to win a million dollars just by saving money anyone can enter to win just become a member and start saving with service. Every $500 saved gives you five entries into the service big share contest. Yeah. Transfer your existing savings to service for chances to win a million dollars. Contest ends April 30th, 2024. Skill test required. For rules, visit service.ca slash win. Million bucks. What's that like? Pretty good. Yeah, because yeah, you still show up to work every day. Well, most days. I don't think Dino I'm a would show motivated up to work. individual, Ryan. It's true. I really like to get shit done. <laughs> I thought he was gonna say shit faced. That's well. <laughs> really caught me at the last yeah. synonym there. I really like to get shit done. <laughs> you maybe you heard wrong. I don't yeah, know. Boys, I, I, There's I'm that just, construction outside. Maybe I didn't hear the it sentence for him. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, we'll do our DoorDash moment. So what do we? Uh, it's a, it's a weird week. I don't know what the you know, uh, I door dashed last night. Which door dash? <laughs> I door dashed uh, sh chicken shawarma poutine. Wow. Whoa. 
Those two things, not separate or is the same. Oh, and by the way, two. At the same time, or did you have to double? That was so good. I'm doing it again. Oh, no, it's same time. Yeah, good. He knows. He knows. You know. Oh, look, at worst, I got lunch tomorrow at best. Heavy guilt this morning. So poutine and shawarma. Yeah. It's amazing. What a world we're in. I didn't know we had that technology. Yeah. Uh, I, when he said two, I was thinking cool lip jars. There's the plastic tub. Mm -hmm. no, it may speak. Back to backer. Because, oh. you know, DoorDash, you can go to the right. grocery store too, you know. Yeah. Okay. I'm not going to say anything because it feels like we're now into the DoorDash. Oh, sorry, sorry. So sorry, I don't sorry. want. No, it's good. It's probably for the he best. He did start with DoorDash. Yeah. Kidding. It's probably for the best. Right. You can, again, that's not probably what everybody would get, but it's what you can get. Yeah, that's okay. how great DoorDash is. What you want from where you want, as many as you want, apparently, uh, whenever you want it. Ordering's easy. Just get that DoorDash app, open it up, and for a limited time, our people, you people, will get 25% off and zero delivery fees on your first order of $15 or more when you get the app and then put in promo code NATION25. Did you put NATION25? Oh, you can't. Okay. That's the first order. NATION25, if uh, if you're a first-timer, and you'll get that 25%. If you're a Barney. You're calling right. Barney? Barn, Barn, Barnimal? Barnimal Barney? Barney. If you're Barney, 25% off first order. Are you kidding me? Free delivery? Let's go. Sure, jury's out, but we'll you know, we'll figure it out. Right. Uh, so, with that said, there are five non-flame games, uh, including the flame sick game, uh, in the NHL tonight. So, what uh, what are we feeling? Man, we got some good ones tonight. You already talked about it with your bets. The Panthers are on Broadway. Two of the best teams in the East. I don't know who you like more than those two right now. The way they're going, they both have great Russian goaltenders when they're on deep clubs. I think both teams will try to add at the deadline. We'll see how they stack up on Broadway tonight. Five o'clock start. It is. Uh, Florida, minus 125 slight favorites there. Boston and Toronto, original six. It was 3-1. Blown series leads right into the scar tissue of this Leafs core. Love it. Five o'clock start. Uh, never boring between the Bruins and the Buds. Minus 135 for the Leafs, Ooh. who are favored against the Bruins. Huh. And finally, Seattle, Calgary. This one matters in the wild card chase in the West. Nashville ever loses again. One of these teams could be in the spot to take that final wild card. It is a 7-30. Start at the saddle home. A 7.30 start. Why are you pointing? Because it's an odd start time. Oh. I want you to but be you're pointing at, You didn't point at Jack. Because I know you're going. You're always going to the game. You didn't point at Bill. Bill knows. I, Bill's sharp. Bill doesn't need to know. Yeah, Bill's got the calendar. He's organized. Yeah, I got to tell you dopes what's going on. It's 7.30, 7.30 start tonight. Cracking and flames. That's what's on the menu. For DoorDash, with Double Dash and DoorDash, you can order from multiple restaurants or stores in that same delivery without additional delivery fees so that everyone can get what they want and what they need. So everyone on your DoorDash order got Do what it. they wanted. All yeah. one of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how that goes. You can even get the, the poutine from one place and the chicken shawarma from the other and then oh, make I your know. own. Now, you're not, a, you're not a sweet guy, but I feel like that's kind of... Okay, we've ordered our food, and then they say, hey, do you want to still... Uh, do you want to... You want some here? So, well, I don't, I hadn't really thought of that, but now that you mentioned, ooh, maybe I could use a nine pound cinnamon bun. That would be delicious. My kids After my bucket of fried chicken my, by myself. Oh, my kids yesterday had the nine pound cinnamon Did bun. Did they? In Buffalo. I, I got a picture. <laughs> this mask. The size of their head. Oh, yeah. yeah. Huge. And it is. Uh, it's America right there. Like what was the thing in Kill Bill where they just kind of gives you the shot in the chest? That's oh, the yeah. that's the cinnamon bun. It's like heart there. Are you talking Pulp Fiction when she goes through their? their no, house? it was Kill Bill. He just kind of did the okay. little thing in the, the chest. They think, yeah. the five and then it takes you punch. what about a minute or oh. before it kills you? Mm. Dying now. It was so good. It's worth it. Yeah. Tell my tell the kids I love them. Yeah. And uh, teas and peas, Dean. It's been fun yeah. working with you. Uh, please clear my internet browser. History, if you could actually, I'll do it right now. If you can't clear my arteries, if I fall clear down, my internet browser, yeah, if, you could, if you could do that. Um, so yeah, weird week. I think that because you had Markstrom kind of do the you know, he was upset, no management, whatever you want to call it. Well, he had that, he hasn't say. played poorly since then either. It's not like and it's then, affected the game, right? And then it, I guess it was game day where Uyghur said, I want to be on a team that's buying, not selling. Said, okay, well, it's. Caudry was asked about, you know, it's Kipper night. We don't need to keep talking about trades and that. It's it's very much everyone knows. Everyone's Start adults. Everyone's pros. Uh, but it will be an interesting game tonight, a week ahead. I don't really know. My spidey senses are tingling, Dean. Are Something's they? coming. Tell us, Rhett. Man. Maybe. And then I was thinking. Is that it the shawarma? It might be. Yeah. So can we get off? 
<laughs> and Bill's sitting here chewing his arm. He's waiting for lunch with the fellas. Let's yeah. go here. I just put on a fresh roll of TP in the bathroom, so we're set. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I mean, it's I don't know if you're if you're a fan, it probably it means your team's not doing real good, and you're probably not making the playoffs, and you're seeing players that you like move out. But if they move Markstrom, I agree. If they don't move Markstrom, they're in it till the end. They have a chance. I would certainly not write them off of going and getting a depth D man if they move Hannafin and trying to walk that tightrope of yeah. be good, challenge for playoffs, but also move your older guys and turn them into young assets. And so I would recommend best of both that. worlds, really. Yeah. I would recommend not that. easy to do, but to this point, it's been almost sterling. It is not out of the realm of possibility. It actually, Correct. is probably this if you're uh, that way, the mm -hmm. odds might be sell Price. a guy, bring a guy back. Yep. Yeah. Even if. And you can shape it that way. Oh, well, look, we're, we're going to the playoffs. Even if in your heart of hearts, if you're Conroy, I, I don't think we're going to make it. But it's it, it's something for the guys in that room. I'm not stripping sure. this bear. You guys aren't going to have to play 28 minutes a night. Right. The, the other thing is you, you're you not dropping far enough to improve your draft exact position. So you, oh, wait, If Markstrom's around, I agree. Yeah. yeah, right? Like you, So you may as well take a stab at it. There's yeah. no sense, oh, we're going to lose – two or three more no go for yeah. it go for it. so maybe there will be some guys coming in tyson berry you got a big uh yeah big time. i don't know why it's uh go i, feel ahead. Like I just don't berry think been you're gonna guy. bring a guy in for cheap like him i think nashville it would be free and i don't think there's a lot of guys that can play nhl minutes that call trots and find out he's a manitoba guy why is he not playing like it's well i mean not playing yeah they is it a deep so line want, or is he done but it's a team that knows a thing or two about defense, and they've been playing well. And now you want a guy that he just never fit there because they have Roman Yossi there. It, it, it was, was never like because they didn't want him. They no, they just had to make that's... the money work for Ekholm. So it's never been a fit. That's why I'm curious about it. Yeah, I I feel like you have Shillington who can let let him fly around and run a power play ever. Have, like... <laughs> well, how how old is he? Just let him start it. now. Well, I just. I, okay. I, I would be get a get an older veteran guy. They can both coexist. Is my point. I, mean, I, I see. I, I don't. I, I just. I don't see Barry as a guy that's gonna. Hey guys, gather around. Come under the shade tree here, and let me tell you a story about a career I've had. No, and and I'm not even saying that. I just. I am very fearful of what things look like when you have Pahal or Gilbert in your top four, and then Osterley comes into play with the other guy. That scares the shit out of me. Oh, there's no debating. So that, that's the but only, you, I'm not saying Tyson Berry is your final piece. It's like you need someone to keep the seven, eight, nines off your agree, roster. Agree. So what, who it is, we'll find out. Yeah. No, I don't disagree there, which is. And I, he's a power play wizard. So go get it. Oh God, I don't care. Um, You want, you want to bitch with the power play, but I'm you don't want to fix the power I'm play. Not sure he's a it's too late to, to, to we, how many hours have we bitched about the power play? We're going to fix it at the deadline. 14%. No. We're now that you're out of the playoff picture, we're gonna worry about I don't know. Well, you got 20 games left. Is there that many? So 15 many. in March, and then you play till the 18th of April. 14. Yeah, I think probably around 20. 18th of April. Oh, is it that long? Yeah, I know. Really? Yeah, San Jose on the 18th. Jeez. Sage. It's the annual Dustin Wolf plays the last game of the year against San Jose tradition that we're starting here. Zadoro getting a hattie again. <clears throat> We trade him back. <laughs> we'll take him, Vancouver, but we need you eat money. <laughs> yeah, just take him. Just take him. Uh, that'll, I guess, do it for today. Anybody have anything else they want to get in? Oh, uh, I did watch Afterburn. Cammy's made a special request because you two are working tonight. Remember that? You oh, that that's tonight? right. She wants me to wear my jacket. Yeah, she wants you to wear the jacket. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> yes. We don't have a relationship, and she was beaking me. <clears throat> this wow, is BS the like jacket. <laughs> See, was she was she giving you props or beacon you? Uh, you know what it was. I'm an old guy. I know when the it's beaking. Okay. You can you can fake that you're being nice, mm. but I know what's going on. I like that leather jacket, and I'm not beaking you. I do like that I jacket. do, and you yeah. need to see the leather. jacket. It's phenomenal. You don't appreciate it. You also had like the velvet jacket, right? Didn't I you wear that? A, at you? I got a velvet. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I got thinking after, and I thought about it as I was watching. It's like, what you should have done is gone full dumb and dumber and come out with the oh yes, the you orange and that'd be the orange tuxedo with the cane, <laughs> the, the top. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been great for this uh, skipper night. This this is how you would uh, definitely <laughs> me and Red should yeah. have been the oh, the deep air that would have been, would have been great. Uh, so yeah, seven thirty start. We got uh, you know we'll do this thing again tomorrow again.
Yeah, wear the jacket. Yeah. And look, I, the one thing I like about Cammy, she's not scared. She's the, this is a old bunch of dads. She's not intimidated at all. No, she's she's, already, got she's chirping dip. a little. I like it. Yeah. Be nice. Seven beer. Seven beer after seven beer. Right? Yikes. There's yeah. more than seven in there. If this fridge is empty, that's a serious bit of work you've done. Oh, that's shit. That's right. I want to say thanks to Bill. Bill paid money for this. Jesus, Bill. Good. Talk about gracious. your life decisions. <laughs> Bill, we did the top shelf elf Christmas campaign in support of Closer to Home. They have their, you know, their contest to make sure that uh, the contest, the Christmas campaign, that families get gift cards and gifts and get food. to do christmas they get to do christmas and one of the packages that we had on for auction was this the barn burner experience you come in you you hang out here you see what this is that we do and uh maybe go have a, a bite to eat or clearly bill's a good person because i'm sure he didn't yeah, pay for this this he is not money, money well spent charity. but it's yeah. money that was used charitable well, in a in a great way now so. you get to watch boomerita wedge salad so we're looking forward to your afternoon is that what we're oh i was just thinking about that today. Where are we going? <laughs> is that the place maybe some bacon maybe. yeah some of his origin on top. I love it's when you can have a salad. It's like, oh, you're eating healthy, and it's just smothered in blue cheese and bacon. bacon. I got a buddy on Luke's team. Down, he, he, you should see the amount of blue cheese. It's, it is absolutely like, yeah. They put a lot of blue cheese on there, and he's like, yeah, two more, please. Oh, can you um, get a salad without meat and cheese on it in the states? Is that possible? I haven't seen one yet. There would be special restaurants that you could go okay. to and find one, but you Hard have to, to search them out. Yeah, you would for sure. Not in Buffalo. We yeah. appreciate you. If anything happens, you know, trade wise, we're always going to be ready to. Yeah, I'll be ready to jump on. To jump yeah, right on with that uh, instant analysis. Yeah, internet issues. Or what was the problem in the TANF trade there? The, uh, no, I gave you great insight from the coach. That is true. McKee. Okay. I he was did. watching the show. He was just moral support. Now, I, I just thought of it. I thought for sure you would have had the Scott Oak. I thought for sure you would have had it. I just, I, I well, Pinder will have that. I'm um, stunned actually now that you mentioned it. Well, we yeah, can close the show on it. I'll just send it to Jack. It's it's everywhere. Um, me? Well, there it is. Let's yeah, take a so look. Let's end the show on this. Uh, Brett, before we go, we should mention uh, the podcast that you do. It's called The Barn Burner, and you're on it with uh, Boomer and Pinder. I guess you get that. You listen to that back in Finland. Uh... <laughs> actually, I do. We talk about it. Like... <laughs> <laughs> no, I do. You were talking about last time I was here. Well, thanks for coming on. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> no, I won't. But <laughs> no, I like it though. Yeah. No, I won't. But I like See, it. See, there's the little kipper. There. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going on. Yeah. But, no, yeah, yeah. but I like it. Yeah. yeah. So hello uh, to Scott Oak. Thanks for the shout out to uh, to Scotty and to uh, Kipper for watching. Hello, to Kipper. Yeah. There you go. The goat. That'll do it, buddies. See ya. <laughs>